What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Crazy Ant Farm. Ooh, boy, holy moly, it feels great to be back. We got two special guests on the show for you tonight. We got the one and only Riley B. Smith and Wayne Perret. It's going to be a great show, guys. Of course, we got top five lady or TV female characters this week. Uh, mm. Box office predictions, word of the day. And Bill Ward chart toppers. Yeah. yeah. So much going on. And a rotating uh, group of uh, hosts. Yeah. Yeah. So right now we are currently myself, uh, J-Lo, Yo. Latte, Soundman, uh, um, Ace, Jason won't be joining us today. Mm. Uh, he's got some family business to take care of that he's dealing with. And um, Lil Cam will at some point be popping in. She'll be joining us at some point. Yeah. Uh, she had some business to take yeah. care of, but so she will be here. So yeah, yeah you may of, not know though because she doesn't talk. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. She, just she saying, just saying. Yeah, for, might, the, for those who watch us on YouTube, you'll know she, yeah, when she you'll shows know, up. She'll but, you know. pop in. But. <laughs> yeah, we're like gonna talk about Gilmore Girls. That's right. Yep, I wonder if she's got her uh, top five. She better. Uh, man, I imagine <laughs> that two of them will know who they are. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know for a fact. Yeah, Lauren Graham is on there for sure. I bet both of the girls from Gilmore. Oh, Alexis Bledel, you think? Yeah, and then I'm. Thinking Ellen Pompeo from Grey's Anatomy because that's her no, that's her other is. big one. Someone from This Is Us. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, sure, sure. Rebecca. Why are we? Uh, I bet. Is no. We're just giving. I her bet her all of those now. are right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. I'm going to be showing my age, unfortunately. Are you? So I just, yeah. just want to make this apparent. Um, Emily doesn't talk, but she's on camera. I talk, and I'm behind. And you're not, not on yeah. camera. Yeah. Soundman, I think, is each week uh, vying to get in front of it's the camera. True. I think. Like, Let yeah. me shine. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, the people must see me. <laughs> they must <laughs> see the longness of my hair. Ever since I told him, no one can see you over there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. They're like, gonna see me now. Started a campaign now. Uh, yeah. November sixth, we'll vote, Chris, and we'll decide yeah. whether Soundman gets in front of the camera or not. Uh, vote but for no. Soundman. <laughs> All right, let's jump into industry. Let's do news. it. Let's do it. Start off with a uh, Harvey Weinstein. Dun dun dun. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. I don't even. Know yeah. What oh, okay. So they announced uh, recently that the Manhattan District Attorney dropped one of the six criminal charges mm. against him. Um, and we're talking about the Me Too movement. You know, he's uh, got some criminal charges for, um, you know, attempted rape and sexual assault. And uh, he's steady been trying to get charges dropped yeah. and, uh, you know, or knocked down to a lesser charge. And, and so this was a win for him. He did was successfully able to get one thrown out. Um, I, I feel like he's going to continue to put up a fight. And I don't know. The scary thing is I feel like this guy's still got a lot of power. That's what I'm thinking. Too. I, I mean, you know, I feel like they've really, stripped him down. And yeah. listen, if he successfully wins this. But I he's mean, got a wrongful termination suit. Yeah. He's they the company's gone. Yeah. They sold the company. Yeah. So I mean, I, I, I he know, wins. Man. He's coming after everybody. Yeah. I think that yeah. that did him. But I mean, Bill Cosby was a powerful man too. So I just that's what I'm hoping for. I just really hope he gets. Yeah, but this could have just been crimes. like this could have just been like some paperwork or the right. timeline wasn't right. Or yeah, something could yeah. Have been right. uh, I mean, something there was, there was a series of things. You're like, right. I mean, yeah. there was a series of things that caused it's, it to get yeah. tossed it's out. It's one out of six. So and there's exactly. still six more. He has yeah. to get. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. And I am happy he's going broke through this whole process. I am too. So. I am too. Let's <laughs> okay. be honest about it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. whether he wins or loses, I mean, this guy, I think we all know what we think of yeah. this guy. Let's, yeah. So, Honestly. okay. Yeah. yeah but we'll keep people updated <laughs> on it because as yeah. we've said in the past, the Me Too movement is definitely not going away. Yeah. And he seems to be the king of. Yeah. yeah. So we will definitely keep our eye on it and uh, keep you all updated with what's going on with yes. old Harvey. Yes. All Mr. right, Harvey, Mr. <laughs> Harvey, <laughs> Kevin Hart signs a deal with Nickelodeon. I'm excited about this yeah. one because he's hilarious in a uh, Secret Life of Pets. I actually like that. Like it was mm. an animated film. And yeah, it was, it was pretty funny. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, he did the the voice in that too, mm -hmm. right? In the film. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah. and this is for apparently scripted series. Yeah. For, for kids, live action. So live and action, animated, and animated. Mm -hmm. So uh, man, this he's taken off. Yeah. I mean, he really is. Yeah, he's he got really like is. that work mentality of the rock that's why i think they work so well together agreed so i mean not like he was hurting before the rock no. but i would definitely say since he did a couple of movies with the rock he's yeah. just skyrocketed even more yeah. i mean i think he's definitely benefiting from that yeah. you know um and that seems to be the case with everybody who works with the rock yeah seriously except for vin diesel they uh, yeah I was, heads, but. <laughs> I was just talking about him the other day because i was talking about just 
you know, everything. And uh, Ashley asked or requested that if I ever am so lucky to meet The Rock, I have to take a selfie video with him saying, I love you, Ashley. (laughs) (laughs) So I've made this promise. So if The Rock is ever in my vicinity, I have to try my damnedest (laughs) to get him to say that to my friend Ashley. Okay. Well, the next time we're out in California, we'll attempt to make that happen. (laughs) Um, Go find his ass. uh, So you'll have to come, Tavia. (laughs) And if not, maybe we can interview him and at least get him to say it. That would be epic. Uh, I mean, you know, she can listen to it over and over Mm. and over again. (laughs) Just replay. I've heard he's super duper nice. He'd probably be down for I'm him. sure yeah. he would. I bet he would do it. Yeah. I bet he would do it. And I mean, if he ever meets Ashley, he will love her. So, That's, you know, it's... I mean, it's true. She's adorable. <laughs> Who wouldn't love her? I mean, she and they could compare guns. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she, she's sculpted, she's bodybuilding. <laughs> you know? Yeah. All right. All right. Note, anyway. note that down, guys. Just Ashley that out just there. got more time than most people do yeah. on the show. Like, <laughs> oh my goodness! Like, but why I, is everybody yelling so much? Oh. We get excited, bro. We, we, get, excited. we get excited. But I also right. think Kevin Hart picked up his um, his yeah, workout. About Kevin Hart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah this was, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. But I think he picked up his uh, workout strategy and shit like that. He's been yeah. working out a lot. I don't know if I have him on Snapchat and he's like, well, remember when he came here just a couple months yeah, ago. Yeah, I do saw him show. running, down, running the beach. on the beach. Yeah. Yeah. Was so he really? He, yeah. Did he have like security yeah. with him? Or yeah, yeah. big old dude. Oh, like, okay. He had to because he was so recognizable. I mean, he's like four foot yeah, seven, like, so everybody <laughs> knew who it was running down the beach. It's like, yeah. there's a four foot seven black man. That's Kevin Hart. Like, <laughs> oh my God. I mean, you know. Muscular. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Funny as shit. Were you all there putting him on the news? No. They were trying I, just, I was just driving home from work and I was like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> just like pointing at him the whole time but couldn't stop. Like I was on Highway 90 just yeah. like, stop. No. Oh, <laughs> I, I know one head of, uh, I, I know one person out there w- would have wanted him on the news. Who? Probably Brad. Mm, yeah. Would have had like yeah, a whole know. assignment crew down there to yeah. get, uh, get him. I don't yeah. know. And yet somehow we never get people on there. Yeah, <laughs> never, <laughs> never. I keep telling him we'll book him for him. Yeah. Him. <laughs> like, we, we have help him out. People, Something. But, you know. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, this next one, I know that you're excited about the mouth. Alias gets a reboot. Yes. Jennifer Gardner, Bradley Cooper. Well, I don't know if Bradley Cooper's going to Well, he was in it. it, but he was like... I think I think Bradley Cooper, it. I'm going to I'm gonna say he will make an appearance in the show. In the At reboot, least an appearance. Because he's such a good guy. Yeah. And he took the time to, because like you said, you brought it up, uh, Ron Rifkin and Greg Grunberg mm-hmm. were both in A Star is Born, and yeah. they were on Alias. And yeah. he took the time to cast people that were in Alias in yeah. his film, in his directorial debut. It's true. I took that as he remembers where he came from. Yeah. So I absolutely feel like he's yeah. going to show up on the Alias reboot. Honestly. You know, big star or not. At least for an not, episode. I, yeah, yeah, at least for an episode. Like Melissa McCarthy did on Gilmore Girls. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, just because you reach a certain level, you kind of don't forget where you came where from you kind from. of a thing. And Jennifer, I mean, everybody loves Jennifer. She says Brad... Come be in the show. Right. He's going to, what's he going to say no? Exactly. I mean, I don't think so. Exactly. So. And if you want to catch that episode of Is It Worth It where we go in depth about A Star is Born, you can catch that on our YouTube channel and crazyantfilms.com. That's right. That's right. And we also, uh, you can catch the uh, Is It Worth It when we review Peppermint That's right. with Jennifer Garner. Mm-hmm. And you can listen to the old episode of this very podcast. Uh, where we talk to Randy Gonzalez from yeah, Peppermint. Yeah, from Peppermint. We're all over the place. All over the place. <laughs> over Apple the place, Podcasts, I mean. Spotify, Google Play Music, all That's those right. places. So That's generally, right. was it worth it? It was worth oh, it. Oh, yeah. I've yeah. heard good things about it. Yeah, well, yeah. it was really a good. A Star is Born? Mm-hmm. Oh. He, just he wasn't here were... last week when we were talking That's about right. it. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I was on the road. No, you're they good, were ranting and yes, raving about how good it Star is so Born good. It deserves to be so nominated for every Oscar category. So good. And it should win. I got it. you. Yeah. <laughs> and Bradley Cooper, I said it last week, I'll say it again this week. This generation's Clint Eastwood. That was his I think he's gonna make the yeah. transition from epic actor to epic director. He's a composer. He's proven now he can sing. Yeah. I think he's like just following right along in those steps of like what Clint Eastwood was able Does to Clint do. Does Clint Eastwood sing? Huh? Clint Eastwood sings? Yeah, and composes. You know, play for uh, he did the that. music for Play Misty for me, directed it, starred oh. in it, and composed the music for it. And yeah. Well, dang, I didn't know all that. That's and they're getting ready to star in a movie together, The Mule. The Mule. And I think that's that where the torch good. is going to be yeah, kind of passed. Really good. And, uh, yeah, yeah. It, I still hope Clint Eastwood moves down here. I don't know if that was a real article or not, but I saw an article where it said he wanted to move to Biloxi, and I'm like, come down it's, here. It's a do potential. It. I've heard that as well. So Clint. Come be on the show, man. Before yeah. we go to LA. Yeah. Before we go I to LA. I can buy you something at McAllister's. It's my business card. <laughs> Anything you know from the menu. Dude, I would have game, though, man. Since he Steve won't take you up on uh, the yeah. order. Like, what Gosh, the hell, man? Steve. Come on, Steve. Yeah, hit All me right. back, bro. Speaking <laughs> of um, comebacks. Yeah. Mm, mm, wow. I don't yeah. know about this one. Yeah. The Connors. The Connors. The Connors came back. Yep. Did y'all watch week. it? I watched it this morning. 
it uh, was interesting. I could really tell that they were acting. I, it just it didn't um, feel real. Organic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it it didn't. Um, I mean, uh, of course, John Goodman and Mary Steenburgen, and, and yeah. you know, I mean, and Laurie Metcalf, they were fine. Yeah. Because they're they've been continuing to act the whole time, but. The newbie, you, the, you know, the kids who have come back and everything is just kind of, you can tell Sarah's been behind that, the talk desk for yeah. like way, way too long. I mean, it just, yeah, it seemed forced. It seemed like they were reading lines and I don't know. I mean, there were moments when it was okay. It was yeah. pretty emotional as everybody knows. Yeah. The rumors were, how are they going to get rid of Roseanne? How are they going to do it? Well, they did indeed kill Roseanne. Mm -hmm. um, she OD'd on opioids. Yep. Um, and it was a, I mean, a pretty emotional episode of talking about her abuse and addiction to the drugs and how it was prevalent. And of course they stuck to their theme about dealing with real life situations yeah. about how people can't afford drugs and Medicare and, you know, and, and stuff. And I mean, it kind of dealt around that, but I don't know. It just, and I mean, obviously hmm. we aren't the only ones that think this, the ratings were not good for the opener. It was down like 35% from the original opener when it came back last year. Yeah. And so. only 4% above the finale. Yeah. So it, it's. Could that be people who are def wanting to defend Roseanne not coming back? Maybe. I, think, I, I don't know. Maybe. I, I think that ABC and a bunch of other people were kind of hoping for a ratings boost the same way when everybody wanted to see what it was like coming back. Yeah. I thought a lot more people would maybe tune in to see how they got rid of Roseanne. Yeah. But apparently they didn't care because yeah. people didn't tune in. Yeah. So, um, and... Well, we were talking about how last season, like, each episode it was dropping in ratings. Yeah, double digits yeah. every week it, it yeah. dropped. So, and it just continued that... Here's the interesting thing, though. One person we know did watch it. <laughs> that was Roseanne. Yeah. And uh, not happy. No. Oh. Roseanne tweeted... What'd she say? Uh, right after <laughs> the show. I'm not dead, bitches. I'm not so dead, bitches. <laughs> And then released what? an official statement along with her rabbi, yeah. basically just, I mean, lampooning ABC and bashing them, saying that the way that they killed Roseanne off nullified all of the, the goodness of what the show was meant to be, a family-friendly comedic show yeah. with a real look at life. And she said by killing off her character the way they killed it off, it, it basically just, you know, gets rid of everything the show was supposed to stand for. But... I think that the real reason she was upset and the real reason that she said I'm not dead bitches is because apparently, for people who don't know, part of the buyout agreement with ABC and the Warner Casey company and everybody involved with, with Roseanne was that she got to keep the rights to the Roseanne character. None of the other Connors, none of the how the, the house, the storyline, no, but to the character of Roseanne Connor, she got to keep the rights to the character and she got the rights to any future spin-offs or shows dealing with Roseanne. I don't think there will be. But well they killed her. Yeah. So I think that you know you're not going to come out with a Roseanne show as Roseanne Connor when clearly they definitively killed her character well unless you went so, did the whole back in time thing where right, you did like the but, prequel when she was what a teenager right, right. so yeah. i mean maybe but i think that's what her tweet was it's yeah. like hey i'm gonna maybe still do this character so somewhere did she not i mean it wasn't a secret that they were gonna do that did she not know that that's what they were gonna do i i, I guess i guess she, she believed it was a rumor and yeah. then when it really happened she and, was kind of upset <laughs> that maybe she had gone away somewhere and yeah. was dealing with her issues or something that like but to definitively kill her kind of yeah. like says hey we know we told you you could have future spinoffs but we're killing her yeah yeah i mean so i i don't know but she seemed a little upset yeah well i don't i don't think there would be a possibility for it anyway i don't know who would possibly fund that anymore mm -hmm. especially or, with or, how dismally this is done or if yeah, anybody would honestly. watch it i mean like the ratings were not good mm -hmm. people that's like, what i mean like there's not really a future for it anyway I, exactly yeah i feel like abc is going to follow through with this season because they kind of were under contract for two seasons and i feel like they're going to follow oh, through this season. season well roseanne oh, and then and, this and this, this would have been the second okay. season so and i feel like that's that's it they're yeah. not going to go past that i wouldn't think no but, uh, not if it continues to fall every yeah, week i agree um, with that so that we shall know. see but speaking about talking a little bit about streaming a little bit <laughs> iron fist got canceled after two seasons yeah Canceled. Like, yeah. Another done. cancellation. But I don't think this is the end of Iron Fist. I don't either. You know, it's all over the place about, oh, Iron Fist has the dubious, you know, distinction of being the first Marvel series yeah. to get canceled by Netflix. But I think it's a strategic move. Yeah. Um, there's been a lot of talk. A lot of the fans have been just adamant about 
pairing up him and Luke Cage for Heroes for Hire. Mm -hmm. Um, Anybody who follows comic books or knows anything about the storyline in the comic books, that's an extremely popular comic book and they're them as a team it's always been more popular than both luke cage and iron yeah. Fist solo yeah so i think that they were seeing that i think they were seeing the uproar for yeah. heroes for hire heroes for hire and figured well this is a way to get us out yeah so i think they they had already previously announced luke cage season three yeah so i think what we're gonna see is we're gonna see danny old iron fist bouncing around from series to series until luke cage season three is done Mm -hmm. and then i think you're gonna see the announcement of a heroes for hire come in because i mean that's what the fans want they were awesome in the defenders yeah and you know if for anybody who saw season two of uh luke cage you know danny made an appearance on there in an episode they were great together and i think that even more uproared the heroes for hire heroes for hire so i think that's and and both netflix and marvel came out and said the end is just the beginning yeah so they're they're clearly hinting at he's not going anywhere he's just he posted that on his personal instagram too right like yep so i I i would Marvel no. usually only gives a certain amount of time for one particular character anyway, even in the films. Right. right. Everybody gets three or whatever. Like right. nobody has like just ongoing personal story. Exactly. They all end up merging into something else at some point. Yeah. So I d I don't think he's going anywhere. I don't no. think any of the characters are. I loved Colleen Wing. Yeah. So, you know, and uh <laughs> we're pulling for our guest last week, James Chen. James Blind Chen. spot will just have to show up on Daredevil. Yeah. I mean, exactly. if there's no Iron Fist uh, season three, he just shows up. He's Daredevil sidekick anyway. Yeah. So Marvel, if you're listening, That'd still hire epic. James Chen back as Blind Spot. Hell yeah. Uh, we sent the gift baskets, damn it. <laughs> <No. laughs> oh, and oh, then uh, I think that's where he could end up. Yeah, so, um, definitely. We'll see. He, That'd they, be awesome. he clearly researched him. Yeah. Go listen <laughs> to the interview. Yeah. Go listen to the interview. Hell yeah! Last week's show. That's right. It was awesome. Well, it's also um, since we're on Iron Fist, talking about uh, Netflix is no longer including free trial membership. Oh shit! Yeah. In its uh, net edition in 2019 for shareholders. Yeah. Like in a statement release saying, this is adding noise to our membership forecast in a way that isn't material. So it looks like they're going to be pulling back or pulling the free free sponsorship. Mm. Because a lot of people sign up, watch for a month, and then... Out, uh, well, cancel it and get a new name. Yeah, or, yeah, or yeah. just create a I new email. I feel like they yeah. don't they don't need it though. <laughs> yeah, they announced uh, this week that they beat expectations for new subscribers by seven million. Yeah, um, s- 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 uh, shares shot through the roof after that announcement. Yeah. Um, a four billion dollar uh, profit. Yeah, um, this last quarter, um, and. They announced that they were buying ABQ Studios. We talked about that a little bit last week. They announced this week, though, that that's going to be a bargain. Apparently, they're picking up their new studios for thirty million dollars. Okay. It was built for a hundred and eight million. Damn. So they're that they're picking that up for a time. I feel like they're good to go, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, but their yeah. stocks hadn't really like they're supposed to go up eleven percent, and it only went up maybe four percent. Yeah, but come on, four percent's a big jump. Mm, when you're promising your shareholders eleven, and you they only get four. Well, well, but I mean, to be fair, that's Wall Street expectations. Yeah. I mean, I think that you know, Reed and the guys probably came yeah. in a little under that. But yeah. so while they did miss Wall Street, they they still cleared. I mean, yeah. so. Sound Man's just extra shrewd. He yeah. is. Yeah. Man. He's, He's like, like you gotta stick to them numbers. Right, right. <laughs> Hard. Those numbers Gosh. are very important. <laughs> Hell yeah! Uh, for all of our YouTube watchers, Little Cam has entered. Little Cam. And hey. for all who are only listening, Little Cam is here. Say hello, Little Cam. Yeah, I just been... did. There you go. See, mm, and here. she doesn't like it little when you put Little Cam. Cam on her Starbucks drink. She oh, doesn't no. care for that. <laughs> really? Because I loved Gaffer. <laughs> I even like posted a picture of it. Say you ain't alone. You ain't alone. Want to mess with? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I am not alone. They mess with the whole damn family. <laughs> That's true. Oh it's my true. goodness! It's okay. It's all right. That's so funny. All what? right. Where, where are we at? Yeah. Ah, Rihanna stick. Hildebrand, right? Yes, that girl. I'm so glad you said it because <laughs> I was scared to say it. Okay. So, yeah, she's getting us here. She is the girl from Deadpool that's always flipping people off from the X Men. Yes. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. She's getting her own Netflix series. Cool. Yeah. So that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, we'll. S- uh, I don't see where it, what it's called. Kiwi, Frank, right? Kiwi? It's based on Kiwi. Kiwi uh, trinkets. The same name. Yeah, yeah, something. Trinkets. Yeah. Yes. It look so interesting. Can't wait to see the trailer for this one. Hmm. Should be interesting. Yeah. 
because I haven't seen her in anything else. And I haven't, I to be honest, I mean, I'm just going to be fair. I haven't heard of the novel. Yeah. But it sounds like an interesting thing. A young misfit who makes an unlikely group of friends when she's forced to attend a shoplifters anonymous meeting. Yeah. So maybe wrong place, wrong time, but she gets grouped in as a shoplifter yeah. and has to go attend this thing or whatever. That'll be interesting. Hell she yeah. seems to like these characters of these like you know rebels. Yeah, rebel girl that's forced with a weird group of people yeah. and kind of like you know so. Yeah. Just like screw it's kind of you, a little society. reflection of herself. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Hell yeah! Uh, talking a little bit more about streaming, Wu Tang Clan, Riza, Raza, whatever his name is, gets a ten episode series at Hulu. Going to talk about their origin stories and how they came up in the industry in the nineties. Hmm. I'm pretty excited about this one because I'm a pretty big Wu Tang Wu Tang Clan Clan oh, fan. Oh Wu Tang Clan fan. Uh, yeah, there you just, go. Yeah. Wu Tang Clan fan. Yep. Right um, <laughs> well, I wonder if they're going to talk about what's his name owning that album that they never released. Um, Martin Scorselli or whatever. Yeah, Scorsese. Scorsese. Yeah. You just ain't good with names today. The dude today. that like took away the EpiPen for like cheap and made it more expensive. Oh, not Scorsese. That I know. Oh, that Scors- other guy. Okay, yeah, yes. Yeah, Scorelli or Scorelli. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, yeah that Scorsese. Who? Why would I talk about? Yeah, Scorsese? no, we don't want to talk about Scorsese like that. Yeah, no. he had the AIDS drug that he had. What was like like four dollars a pill, and he bumped it up to like four hundred dollars. Yeah, a pill this or guy total. He's you a know douche. What? Yeah. yeah. They've been like he's been investigated so many times by like the FBI and stuff. Oh, he's totally going to prison. Yeah, yeah he's. Yeah. I he's, thought he went to prison. I don't know. Maybe and not yet, but not he's, yet. Going. he's going. Yeah, oh, he's d- without that. Why don't we just save taxpayer dollars and we'll all just stone him? There, <laughs> yes. There you go. So okay, so <laughs> wow, stone. It's from life. that one short story. You know no, what I'm talking yeah. about? I, okay. The lottery. That's there what it you was. Go. Yeah. So l- my question is, do you think this will be like Hulu's version of um, the Get Down? Mm, maybe. maybe like you know so. a very well, historic do you think do rise it? up kind of, while it's based on a true group uh, yeah but their rise up through I the hope 90s so. that or sounds like, like Compton. it seems like it'd be more interesting yeah. than just like a documentary a documentary right. which i like those but like I-, I liked how the get down was like very multimedia and yes. like you yeah. know i don't know that that would be more entertaining i think than just like Gosh, this darn is it what baz lerman huh <laughs> right? why'd you have to go so far over budget I, no, man like, like and, and so I mean, much money I per loved episode it to get down i did too i, I really wanted it to come back i know them costumes were, like, were nice but they probably could have been done for a little cheaper and right sets yeah, well, and yeah. Stuff, you know? i mean they ran out of money did you catch the back end of the season they did they actually had to animate that, some of yeah. it because they couldn't pay for the production or have the cast yeah. back because they ran out of money so they literally animated some of it how's that like, saving what? money yeah. how's animation saving money it was it was, was it i didn't frames? like it i didn't like how they went back yeah, and forth it, it was, was just yeah yeah it was mm. sad r.i.p to get down yeah. exactly <laughs> but sticking with hulu i think they've all done pretty good though they have yeah. they you, have so. Jaden uh smith has his own like record label or yeah label and is producing in creating his own albums. Yeah, and Justice T is like yeah, just killing it in movies. And, and like, yeah, the Jurassic World movies. Yeah, what's, like, your, what, uh, what's the other cat's name? I can't remember his name, but he was just in uh, uh, Darkest Minds. What's his face? So, uh, uh, I mean, they're all doing it. Yeah, they're, they're, all they're okay, fine. They're, they're good. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. yeah. But sticking with Hulu, uh, they're creating a cheaper live TV bundle. This is going to be just an even more reason for people to go with Disney than Netflix. Uh, this is what this is, guys. Just the battle continues. Well, uh, it's also trying to battle. Uh, YouTube is trying that too to create a cheap uh, bundle for TV, live TV. Yeah, yeah. It's like what's this say? Forty dollars per month plan for live TV and the stuff they already have on the streaming that's services. No, oh. that's not bad at all. Yeah, I mean it's like way exactly. cheaper. Exactly, I'm pretty sure still... it includes sports too. Yeah, and if you're still paying for cable, that's a huge yeah. discount from cable. So I mean, exactly. that's honestly is something we you know we probably look into because Kevin loves watching football and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have yeah. to like try to find it on the satellite and like yeah. yeah. We got some sites for you. Yeah, we can send you. Well, yeah. he's some got links. those too, but I wasn't going to mention them. No. Uh, <laughs> but look, I cut the cable a long time ago. I watch everything online. Yeah. It, trust me, you can find whatever you're trying you to watch <laughs> online somewhere. Yeah, yeah. It, he's, he does that there. too, but some sometimes the, I don't know they're wonky. Yeah. Anyway, they're so wonky. this would be better. That's <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And this would be better. Like Willy Wonka. Like Willy Wonka. Like, I don't know. <laughs> oh my god. <goodness. laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> you and I right. want to know what else is wonky. Ariana Grande mm. and Pete Davidson breaking up. It's craziness. Well, it started. The headline started saying that Ariana Grande was taking more time off from her tour dates because she was emotionally stressed because of obviously the Mac Miller death. But it got obviously got so bad that. The arguments between her and her fiance Pete Davidson, you might have seen him on SNL, they broke up or at least called off the wedding. 
they yeah. said they realized they were uh, going too fast. Yeah, that really doesn't surprise me, honestly. I kind of thought that that was the way things were going to go from the moment I ever heard that they were together and honestly, engaged. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's look, just... I don't want to be harsh about it, but he was clearly a rebound. Yeah. He, he was clearly somebody that was there to help her get through the Mac Miller situation, and then when Mac Miller died, I mean, she realized she wasn't through like with shit. the Mac Miller yeah. situation, and like... Yeah. I mean, you yeah, know. But, I mean, I hope that she gets back to touring soon, or at least I hope she's given refunds. Cause... I know she's got a, a film project that she was working on, and oh, she really? tweeted something from the script or something saying she wouldn't miss it for the world. Yeah. So while she is cutting back and kind of doing, I mean, I guess she's keeping some commitments and stuff. I think a lot of what her emotional stress is, too, is still from Manchester. I think a lot of yeah. people were saying yeah. that that was yeah. part of her emotional problems right now, and probably part of why she's not super anxious to get back on the road. I can understand that. And that's, yeah. I mean, that's even scary. though... She wasn't I didn't even hurt. Think about that. She has, I'm sure, PTSD and is also yeah. just afraid for her fans and for that someone else yeah. would try and do the same thing Absolutely. again. Absolutely. Well, I know, well, it, um, uh, what's his face? Jason Aldean has PTSD right. from yeah. the Las right. Vegas thing. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, and, it makes it hard. You know, I, I mean, I don't know if a lot of people saw this, but you, you, there was problems going on with Mac Miller during Manchester. Yeah. While he was there at the concert and they performed together and co- apparently the breakdown had been started way before yeah. that and there were issues even there. Yeah. yeah. So I can only imagine on top of like what you said, the PTSD and everything that's going on, to have the turbulent relationship during that yeah. and then clearly after, I, yeah, I mean, and she's young. Yeah, you got exactly. Selena Gomez she's 25. who had a mental breakdown yeah. because yeah. of all the, the health problems she's been yeah, having. Yeah, she had to have kidney uh, surgery yeah. like and replacement. What, uh, 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 Demi Lovato with like you know the she's in rehab and, and like, like yeah. these young ki- look man what this is, is a see, scary like, game the the uh, the man for fame yeah, yeah. I mean it, it look it's a beast it, they, they say it all the time swimming with sharks and it's a beast and I mean there's a dark side to this there industry is. and young people I guess you know get caught up in it and, yeah. it's and that's scary. the thing Hang is that people, people I mean everyone wants to be famous and rich and everything and that's all well and good you know but it definitely you have to have the right people on your side and you have to have help handling it and it definitely is not a cure or a way to be happy just by itself you need more than that and it's nothing new you know we've seen it with robin williams we've seen it with all kinds of celebrities that yeah well i mean way back look i mean we can go as far back as like you know uh judy garland yeah you know and marilyn monroe and marilyn monroe and like even probably further back than that it's just yeah these these youngins coming up, they get they get into it and the yeah. peer pressure and the you know and I have to imagine back in the old studio days it was probably even worse. Oh yeah, because you had were no literally control. owned yeah, by the studio. What was the and, one uh, actor who was actually gay, but he had to pretend to be in a relationship? I always forget his name, but he was um, back in the studio system. Rock he, Hudson. Yeah, yeah, Rock. He wasn't allowed. Yeah, to, they, to be they gay. paired him wow. up with Doris Day yeah. because they were like, no way. I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, yeah. so yeah, they, he was he was secretly didn't gay for a long time until like the eighties during his run on dynasty when yeah. uh, like they because they found out because he had i guess gotten aids or something and there was a scene where linda evans's character refused to kiss him because at that point they were still had no idea what uh, aids yeah. was or how right. and that's when it all kind of just the Came shit out. with the fan yeah. that like wait rock hudson is gay like, and he has what? AIDS? what yeah you know and kind of so yeah i mean it's whew, it's a beast yeah. yeah it is a beast dangers of so fame. our best wishes to ariana though and all yeah. of selena all of them that are dealing yeah, with seriously. the stuff that they're going through hope all of y'all can you know get through it and come back and yeah. you know yeah seriously crazy Hopefully. business crazy it is business. a crazy business gotta well, be careful in it some other crazy business uh michael buble he, he says he's gonna retire after his next album love the singer songwriter is retiring because he wants to spend more time with his five-year-old son noah who is um, battling liver cancer yeah. at the moment oh, man. i knew so, that he had a sick child yeah so that's just crazy man like oof. But i don't even know y- what to say about know, that I, yeah it, i mean dealing with a child's health issues is not easy to begin with but you know, kudos to him though yeah because yeah. you know this guy's clearly got his priorities straight family comes first not yeah. fame and he's doing what he's got to do he's yeah. got to retire and be where where he's supposed to be exactly. and so kudos to him for that um and yeah, again, hopefully, you know, thoughts and prayers, everything works out for the son. And, yeah. and you know, in that, I, I don't know, another difficult situation, but you got to respect the guy for walking yeah. away from everything and being Seriously. with his son. I mean, yeah, it's awesome. You yeah. got to, yeah, just, yeah. Mm. 
Someone wow. else who I respect, uh, Dave Grohl, who invited that 10 year old fan Whew. up on. This one's a little bit more I, upbeat. I, I know. Yeah, <laughs> like, uh, we need to update. Yeah, stuff, yeah. Dave Grohl invited a 10 year old fan up and he started playing Metallica songs, Inner Sandman. And Dave Grohl was so impressed that after the show, he gave him uh, his guitar and everything. Oh, yeah. Wow. Take yeah. Home. They did, That's this cool. whole story. This video is, like, went viral. It was so cool. Yeah, because apparently, somehow, I don't even know how he would do it, but somehow Dave Grohl heard him say, out in the crowd, you know, that he could play guitar. Yeah. He, you know, he heard him say it. So he invited him up to prove it, kind of like, okay, we'll come up and play. And this kid just tore it up. Yeah. I mean, wow. the, the video of him walking around just owning yeah. the stage and Grohl is just like, Whoa. what? <laughs> you know, and apparently at the end, a kid clearly brought up, right? Very respectful. Yeah. He went to him and said, hey, where, where do I? put the guitar like dude you want me to set it yeah. over here and he's like tell you what why don't you just keep it yeah That's you know cool. and so Epic. but the kid was all like okay, okay what do i do yeah, with it now but... you know and so um, well he knows not to just set it just anywhere any kind of way like exactly. you can tell a real musician yeah. when they're like okay it's, where's yeah. the stand for this particular uh, guitar yeah <laughs> you know and we were just talking about like the right people around you and the right things his mom clearly god bless her not a stage mom or you know i'm gonna she was like you know he talks about it all the time and i'm sure if he had his way this is a great quote by her she's like i'm sure if he had his way we'd be done and we'd be hitting on the road and going on tour you know starting next week and i'm like honey how about we finish fifth grade first <laughs> yeah let's, let's work on finishing yeah. fifth grade first <laughs> then we'll talk about it oh you know? my so i just thought that was hilarious she's like son put down the guitar let's yeah. finish fifth grade let's yeah. get the homework done we could and do then it we could do it oh so. my goodness <laughs> but good for him man he's clearly i think he's i think she's right i think yeah. we're gonna see him up there at some yeah. point in the future, I mean, he could clearly play. So. That's pretty epic. Yeah. That's pretty epic. Well, speaking of people who can be able to use their talents in more ways than one, but who's not here anymore. <laughs> Just these crazy segue guys. Mm. Crazy segues. Um, <laughs> Amy Winehouse, there's talks of a biopic in the works. Interesting. Yeah. Mm. While the It's uh, from the Kinky Boots writer. So see how that goes. And there's also talks of a hologram tour yeah. in... Her memory. Uh, her dad's doing all that stuff. He's in control of that one. But yeah, I, uh. no, I think the I think that by what how do you say biopic biopic yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah, I just say I biopic. think uh, I think that would that would be more interesting. She seems to have had an interesting life from yeah. what I know. I think that's pretty cool. But yeah. I'm not that's totally not, sold on the whole no, hologram thing. I, I'm a hundred percent with you. I feel like the biopic is fine. Because she did have an interest. It, it would probably be really good, and I yeah. think it would do well. And we appear to be in the season of making biopic Seriously. films about yeah. singers. So yeah. um, I feel like... But first of all, the holograms are scary as shit. They are. <laughs> Second, uh, I feel like, unfortunately, this is a situation where dad is trying to cash in on his dead daughter yeah. by yeah. sending a hologram kind of on tour. Like. like, why? Yeah. I mean, I will say that the technology is insane. It Lil is. Cam and I were at a concert, a Brad Paisley concert, and we were in the Superdome in New Orleans, if you're familiar with where that's at, and Carrie Underwood, and everybody in the dome sold that it was Carrie Underwood yeah. on stage. Did a whole performance together. We're interacting with each other. What the everybody, hell? And nobody knew until she popped up on a monitor and she was like in a different state. And oh, she shit. said, hey guys, thanks so much for listening to that song. I'm over here. And everybody oh, was like, God. wait, what? what? <laughs> you could not tell. That's I mean, epic. when when she walks out from behind the stage, you know, on and starts singing with him, there's crowd roar. Yeah. Now, ah! And it's like she wasn't even there. That, was, <laughs> so like, that is it crazy. It is really creepy yeah. how real it looks. Uh, but that doesn't mean you should do it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Just, the only hologram cool. I'm com I'm comfortable with is one that says, help me, help me Obi-Wan Kenobi. You yeah, know? There you know. Go. Yeah. It's yeah. not saying that. Yeah, I'm not comfortable. Yeah. I'm not comfortable. <laughs> yeah, I was freaked out the first time I saw that Tupac one. I was like, whoa. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Now apparently the Reagan Library is doing a Reagan one That's giving really speeches creepy. and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, what? You're like, what, what are you doing? Can that be dark? Commander in chief. It reminds not me the of uh, in there. <laughs> it reminds me of uh, on Futurama all the like presidents and yes. famous people on the head. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. Like, that's what it seems like. Mm. That's funny as shit. Keeping them alive. Mm. Yeah. Uh, speaking of things that are trying to stay alive, uh, DC is trying to push out this Flash solo film in 2021, but they had to delay it a little bit because they don't even have a green light yet. They're still working on the script and. They just need to rebuild, at yeah, least in my opinion. Yeah, they keep. I, 
Again, I feel like the TV side is perfect, and yeah. you have a perfect Flash. Yeah. And if you really want to move forward with a Flash movie, just put him in it, because mm-hmm. then you wouldn't have to worry about rewriting or yeah. rebooting or trying to get it right, because it's right. Exactly. <laughs> it's already right. Does they're they're, they're doing point? it right, okay? <laughs> just If you want to fix the DC movie universe, just take the TV and put it into the movies. Exactly. And just real quick, because I know we're running out of time before uh, our guest segments and stuff, but uh, I want... We did watch um, Titans. Mm-hmm. Titans launched on the DC streaming universe, and yeah. it's freaking phenomenal. It is. Again, Berlanti. Yeah. Uh, they get it right. I like, mean, this is a give great, him the film. Yes. And they proved it. This Titans one, it's dark, it's gritty, it's R rated. It's not your, you know, your Teen Titans on on Cartoon Network. Yeah. It's dark, gritty, set in a in an undertoned world of violence. And, yeah. But if you're looking, like, can we do these? In, in the movies and do them right and still have yes yeah just go to greg berlanti and say fix it exactly and i think we'd be fine go. just hand it I think over we'd be fine hell yeah yeah well, maybe they'll learn one day all right now it's time for our first guest segment this week the one and only riley b smith fun fact first ever podcast interview guys this mm-hmm. is gonna be fun oh. yeah, yeah. A- and he's a huge podcast fan yeah so this is gonna be really fun uh for you guys who aren't familiar with the name i'm sure you're familiar with who he is he played ralph on scorpion on yeah. cbs um and yeah just uh, he's got so a lot of stuff and if you're a fan of uh, america 2.0 podcast riley's all over yeah. it, man he's been a huge fan of that oh all right well here he is let's see right on time right on time hello hello hey, hey. hey Riley. yep hey man how are you very good. How are you? Oh, we're all doing awesome, man. Thanks so much for joining us today, man. We appreciate yeah, it. seriously. Well, thank you. It's really fun to finally be on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, we're excited to have you. We were literally just talking about that in the intro, about how this is going to be your first podcast. Yeah. And so we're honored to be your first podcast, Definitely. Man. That's awesome. We got so much to talk to you about. So we're going <laughs> to just kind of let you know who's all here with us right now. It's me, Dustin, and Logan, uh, Emily, Tavia, and Chris. So, hey. Hola. Uh, and it's, it, dude, we're real loose and just kind of laid back and a little bit crazy. We just kind of talk and have a conversation, not really a Q&A type thing. We just kind of talk and have a good time, man. Okay. <laughs> all okay. Right. So, um, first of all, I guess let, let's talk a little bit about how you got started in the industry. For, uh, for everybody out there who's listening, all of our listeners, um, you're, what, 13 now, right? Yeah, I'm 13 as of around a month ago. Yep, about a month ago. So, and you've already been in the business a while. 13 and you've already got some years under the belt. So, why don't you talk to us a little bit about that first? Like, how you got started? Was acting something you always wanted to do from the from the get-go? Or something you kind of transitioned into? Or how'd you get started in it? Well, I was around two and a half, three years old, and... My sister was originally an actor. Nowadays, she's a photographer. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And I was at her agent's office, and, you know, she noticed how talkative I was and just sort of talked to my mom about it. And they just sort of decided, you know what, why not try it? Hmm. And ever since then, I've been doing it. <laughs> now that's and awesome. I haven't wanted to stop. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. So you're talkative. I already like him. Yeah. <laughs> they call me the mouth. I'm I'm kind of talkative myself. So that's kind of a good thing. Kind oh of. God. That's an kind, kind understatement of. of the year. <laughs> All right, so well, that's cool. And you, so, yeah, you you have a lot of credits under the belt. Uh, most, I uh, probably most famous for Scorpion, though, right? Oh yeah, definitely. I so, mean, I've I've done other things, but nothing that would have gotten me as recognized as Scorpion. Yeah, well, a huge fan of Scorpion. Um, and, uh, I mean, for anybody who doesn't really know, I mean, you, you became a regular, you, it was not supposed to be a, uh, a regular role or a recurring role. And I, I you were kind of popular. <laughs> Ralph was kind of a popular guy. Yeah. And so it turned into a regular role and, uh, you know, uh, that's awesome. So, so congratulations on that. I, I want to talk a little bit about Scorpion though, because just when we announced that you were going to be on the podcast, dude. Like your fan base and that show's fan base yeah, is just massive. Huge. Um, they are not happy the show is not on anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, they have an unbelievable Save Scorpion campaign going on on yeah. social media and on the internet that's just insane. Yeah, we've seen that hashtag everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Uh, how do you feel about that? I mean, like, do do you get a lot of interaction from the fans like that? And are, I mean, what what what's your thought process on bringing the show back? Well, I think it would be awesome if the show came back, if I'm honest. It's really nice of all the fans to really be doing this, signing petitions and everything. 
seeing if they can get it revived on, you know, a network like Netflix or something, like Lucifer did. Yeah. And, I mean, I can say that when the show came off, the creators did try to get it on other networks, and we, we did try, and we're still trying our best now. So, I mean, it would be real nice if we really could get picked up by another network, and I'm looking forward to the day we do, hopefully. Yeah, well, Definitely. you know, and that's good. I'm glad that that you shared that because I don't, I'm not sure if a lot of people know that you guys did try to get it and are still actively pursuing trying to get it uh, brought back. Um, so, okay, that's a good transition. So the rest of the cast, w- were you guys kind of caught by surprise? Because the way I kind of saw it is when, you know, the last show was more of a season finale, definitely not written as a series finale. Were you guys kind of taken aback at the cancellation and shocked by it as much as we were? Uh, yeah, we, we really were at that point. I definitely was because I don't know about some of the other cast members, but I just sort of woke up and saw it. And oh. my parents hadn't by then either i just woke up and looked at my phone and saw the article mm. oh. and just i sort of i walked out there and was like yeah uh bad news so i mean <laughs> yeah. it was definitely a huge shock at the time mm. I, I i bet not not a cool way to find out about no. it huh like yeah. you have to read about it that's not good at all Mm-mm. um so, I, yeah, I mean, no, I guess you guys got no pre-warning that it was even going to happen, huh? I guess everybody involved with the show thought it was moving on to the next season? Yeah, we really didn't. Because of the ending, everyone thought, you know, we'd at least get another season and get past 100 episodes. Right. Yeah, yeah. And deservedly. I mean, yeah. you, you guys really deserve to get that because... Uh, yeah, it was fan, and I I hated the ending because I felt like I need to know what happened. Exactly, like you know they they break apart the team, and you're like you can't end it like that. Yeah. I mean that, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean at that at that point in time, it was just it was kind of crazy the shock factor and how the fans reacted and everything that was going on. Yeah, but and- I mean there's still a lot that can be done. Hopefully, I'm really hoping that. You know, one day soon, hopefully, we'll have signed enough petitions or got enough recognition that we can finally bring it back and we can finally finish it and we can at least give the fans a good ending, not that. Yeah, maybe one morning you'll wake up and read an article saying that it's been revised. (laughs) (laughs) That'd be a good morning. (laughs) That's right. It'll be a good morning. So so the rest of the cast members along with you, they're all willing to come back and, and finish it off at least one more season to give it a proper ending. They're all willing to come back. I'm sure most of them are. I don't see any reason why they wouldn't. I'm I'm friends with a lot of the cast, so I don't see any reason they wouldn't want to come back and finish it for one more season. So yeah, I have a feeling if it did come back, they would they would jump on board. Awesome. Well, listen, we're pulling for it. I mean, yeah. you know, we're all about the Save Scorpion uh, hashtag, and we're going to continue to promote the mess out of it because, like I said, we were big fans of the show, and we, we're definitely hoping that it comes back. Yeah. Um. So we will we will definitely keep putting the message out there. And there's so many different outlets now beyond Netflix. I mean, all of YouTube and Apple and Facebook and so many of these different things getting behind making series now. It seems like somebody would pick it up. Yeah, it really does at this point. I mean... You got Netflix, you got Hulu, you got all these different apps, and I mean, really, none of them are going to pick up this TV show with such a large fan base that came out of CBS for no reason. Right. I mean, the ratings were still solid, so it was a... I I just couldn't understand why. When I found out it was... I I couldn't understand why. I mean, another weird thing is we even won the International TV Audience Awards, and I mean, just that alone should show you how big of a fan base we have, so I mean... Absolutely. Seeing that, you would think somewhere would want to pick us up even for a half a season. Yeah, at absolutely. Least. Like a limited run. Give them, give them 13 episodes and right. finish off the story properly. I mean, well, let's talk about the cast a little bit. You said you're friends with the cast. What was it like working w- with, with a bunch of actors that, I mean, just Robert Patrick alone has got to be, for our generation, one of the most iconic movie villains of all time. <laughs> but he's probably like the nicest guy ever. What was it like working with him? Well, you're completely correct about that. He was one of the nicest people on set and one of the nicest people you'll ever get to know. And getting to meet him, well, it was quite the honor. I had seen Terminator 2 a lot beforehand, and I, in fact, did not know his name at the time. I didn't know what he was, I didn't know his real life name, and when mom told me it, and she told me, you know, he was going to be in the show, I kind of freaked out a little bit. <laughs> yeah. When I got to meet him, it was really cool, and he was really nice, and 
still is real nice. And, you know, he promotes my dad a lot on Instagram and Twitter, and he, he really is one of the nicest guys. Yeah, and I you like know, how uh, your relationship you know. with him on the show developed, too. You know, he, he did become a, kind of a grandfatherly figure to, to Ralph, making sure that he wasn't going to end up like Walter did. Um, you know, where he felt like he maybe had made some mistakes with Walter and he didn't want to do those same mistakes with, with Ralph. So I kind of liked where the relationship between you and him were going and, you know, kind of bummed that that didn't play out either. So, right. Yeah. The relationship did develop, you know, later on, even with Ralph teaching Robert lessons. So exactly. Like Robert Cade lessons. Right. Absolutely. And, uh, okay. So we got to talk about mom, Kat McPhee. Did you know who she was or <laughs> from American Idol or was that another one you were just going in and you were like wait who's on it um i did know who she was because my dad josh smith played with taylor hicks who beat her in american idol oh. so i did know who she was going in and we told her that when we first met her oh okay that's awesome yeah it was a very weird coincidence <laughs> <laughs> so is she like just constantly singing on set like all the time um yeah yeah. yeah, that's awesome though. She's got such a great voice. I I wouldn't mind it at all. She could sing all day. Yeah, she sang. She did sing all the time. That's sang nice. a lot just when doing normal activities. She sang a lot during rehearsals when practicing lines. That's Singing so cool. Singing just her normal thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, it seemed like it, the the entire cast got. I mean, how was she as mom? Did you guys have a pretty good working relationship as mom and son? Did you find it easy to acclimate to that type of a relationship on screen? Uh, yeah, actually, it was pretty easy to go from friends to mother and son when we were, you know, on camera. Right. It was pretty easy, you know, just to flow through there, especially, like, in the last season in the plane episode. Oh, yeah, the plane that episode, episode, yeah. That episode was really fun and easy to shoot because of just how well the relationships could be done. Yeah, okay. agreed. And that that's not just me, and that goes for all the other relationships, you know. Kate and Walter, Happy and Toby, all of them. I would agree. I mean, I, I think, I, I mean, I got the impression, at least the, w the way it played out on screen, that behind the scenes, it must have been a really solid group of fun people that enjoyed, you know, doing the show together. Because I think it translated well on screen that you guys clearly got along. Yeah, it was a very fun time and experience, getting to meet a lot of new people and learning a lot of new lessons and having a really fun time on set, that's for sure. Awesome. It was just... It was very new to me at the time, you know, having only really done commercials and a movie and, you know, very small bits on TV shows, getting to actually be, you know, a cast member and getting to learn all these new things and getting to learn a lot of new things from people and just sort of being around all the adults, too. Right. A little different for me. Usually, you know, you get stuck with kid roles, you get stuck with other kid actors. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it was also weird getting to be with a lot of other adults. Yeah. But I could say it was definitely a valuable lesson. Definitely one of the most fun experiences I've ever had. Well, getting that's... to be with all the crew and all the cast, meeting all of them, doing a lot of things off screen too. And do you guys still kind of hang out? Yeah, I mean, like we like you said, we, we know you're friends with a lot of them. Do you guys still get together every now and then, hang out? I know Robert supports your dad and kind of shows up at the gigs and stuff. Uh, what about everybody else? Sadly, we don't get to hang out very often since a lot of them are traveling. You know, Elias yeah. travels from here to England a lot. Catherine is just traveling everywhere, really. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, sadly, we don't get to hang out too much, but I still am able to keep in contact with them. So that's nice. That's awesome. Okay. Well, yeah, that's good. And, I mean, it would be nice if we could get together one of these days. <laughs> like to do a last season? That would be awesome. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, that would be a good reason to come yeah. back together. Yeah. Um, uh, so, so, yeah. Are you um, are you interested in trying to do more um, TV shows, or are you wanting to maybe more like try to get into film, or what do you see for your your main uh, focus for the rest of your career? Well, the answer to that is just plainly yes. <laughs> <It's both. laughs> I got gotcha. you. Just whatever you can act in. And for a lot of movies and a lot of TV shows, especially movies. Okay. Definitely. Very cool. And I mean, I've done quite a lot of big auditions in the absence and Scorpion and. 
been really fun. There's been a lot of things I auditioned for. And yeah. I do wish I could tell you more of the things I auditioned <laughs> for. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Riley, that's just another reason to have you back on the show because exactly. we're, we're pretty sure you're going to get something and then, you know, you can come back and tell us all about it for sure. Exactly. Oh, well, I, mean, I would really love that. It would be awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. We would love that too. I can talk about you about it. Yeah, yeah, that'd be outstanding. And so, listen, I'm not I'm not going to end Scorpion without talking at least a little bit about the uh, budding romance that Ralph had going on. <laughs> what was that like, man? So you, you were talking about getting to interact and work with all the adults, but Ralph was kind of, you know, working on a little relationship, wasn't he? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Patty in real life, her real name was Nikki. I don't know if a lot of people know that, sadly. Yeah, she's actually 18. So, I mean, technically, you could say she was an adult. She didn't really act like an adult. I yeah. can tell you that. <laughs> so, so were, I mean, were you excited when you, when you, when you got the script and you, and, and you saw the direction they were taking Ralph and what was going to happen there? Or were you nervous? Or how was that? Especially since she was really was 18. Of both. A little bow both? A little both, yeah. yeah. It was very nervous, though. I bet. Incredibly nervous. I can only imagine. I mean, when I'm at an age where I'm not in real school and haven't developed real relationships, it's very nervous and awkward even for a fake one. <laughs> yeah. Just, I, I have to imagine that whole situation was a little bit mind-boggling. Yeah. Yeah, it was a little weird. I mean, she was talking about, you know, like getting a car and moving out. Yeah. So it was incredibly weird. <laughs> but it was still really fun. It was still really nice to hang out with her on set. And, I mean, I did learn some stuff from it. I yeah. can say that. Oh. All okay. the scenes were probably some of the most fun and probably some of the most, let's go with emotional to shoot. So, I mean, that, there was definitely something there. And, I mean, I don't think it really completely finished properly. I think it kind of got a bit of a rushed ending to a close. So, I mean, I have a feeling if, the show were to come back and we even got half a season, there might still be a tiny plot line there, yeah. hopefully. It, it, they need to wrap that up and, and let us know what happens there, because I'm like you, I felt like there was still a little bit more to tell there, so yeah, hopefully. Well, we said at the top of the show, or at least at the top of the intro, that we know that you enjoy America 2.0. How'd you like the ending? I like the ending. In my opinion, I thought it was pretty good, and I wanted to know more about how he came to be president. Mm -hmm. I want to know more about what he went through when writing the book. Mm. But all around it, it was a really good ending. Okay, that kind of leads me to, uh, I wanted to ask you what your thought process is. Spencer Garrett kind of let out of the bag that there's going to be a season two. And I know they're working really hard to get it picked up as a TV series. So my question is, is if it gets picked up as a TV series, do you feel like they need to start over um, from the beginning and kind of play that out to, like you said, kind of explain more about the run for the presidency and how it all went down and how it happened? Or what would you like to see happen if they do indeed get a season two for the podcast or get picked up for the series? Well, if they get a podcast, I would just, you know, like to see them go the route they're going. Hopefully they touch, you know, more on the backstory still and seeing how he came to be president, obviously. And if they do start a TV show, which would be awesome, really, it would be really cool to see all the characters in real life. I think they should probably start it over. They should probably have either the first half of the season being what we know in the podcast or the entire season being what we know in the podcast. And then a season two or even season three of that being the continuation. And just seeing what we don't know in the podcast. Yeah. Agreed. Because they set up so many like underlying stories or subplots in the podcast, you know, um, that they, they could really dive into in the, in the backstory of all these characters. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, and yeah, we're huge fans of it, if you couldn't tell, yeah. uh, from social media. Yeah, we, we were big fans of it as well. Yeah. Um, we're actually going to be interviewing JS next week, so we're really excited about that, too. Um, so I, I don't know, Riley. I'm thinking if they if they go TV series routes, you, you maybe need a role. I feel like he does. <laughs> I mean, I don't know who you play, but it would be pretty awesome to be here again. I get to see Spencer again. I yeah. got to meet Spencer first season. He was a really lovely guy. We still keep in very close contact with him today. That's He's awesome. really nice. He really does a lot of things in life. He really and has, he yeah. Pop e from Twitter and everything. Yeah, he's he's phenomenal but, talent. It would be amazing if the show, if it could become a TV show and more people could see him. I think that would be awesome. Yeah. 
I mean, if I got a role, it would be awesome to meet everyone there. I don't know who I'd play, you know. I'm sure. I, I I'd bet JS. Congressman, you know, and a run for president and everything. I don't really know who I'd play, but. Uh, yeah, you know what? We'll I see. bet JS and David could write a character for you, no problem, bud. I bet they could. I, I bet they would. It would be pretty awesome if they could do that. <laughs> <laughs> I really I mean, would. We're going to start the campaign. Yeah, We're just going to okay. tell JS next week, write Riley into yeah. the show, man. Like, you know, even for the season two podcast. Exactly. You can do the voice. Come on, man. There's got to be a role for you. Yeah. Yeah, we got to start a petition. Come on, guys. That's right. Let's do it. Let's do it. That's right. Vote Riley. We'll, we'll vote just start Riley. a vote for Riley yeah. campaign to go with, there you know. We go. We'll get our great. own mugs and everything. That's right. We'll do, yeah. I that's right. We got a candidate running for president. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Maybe, maybe Seth McGuire has a son he doesn't know about. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, ooh. Oh, ooh. scandalous. Yeah. You can pop up on the doorstep. I'm home, Dad. I'm that's home. right. Oh. <laughs> You could be the guy that ruins the presidency, Riley. Well, I mean, come on. There we go. We got it. We got to figure that it out. That would probably be more fun to do if I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah, I like the way you think, Riley. Yeah. I like the way you think. So, um, and, Hey, man, you, you are awesome on social media. Yeah. I'm sure that the guys with America 2.0, and I know we do, appreciate how active you are and how many retweets and likes and comments you get. And um, It's yeah, pretty awesome, man. Yeah, all the man. support, really. Well, I certainly try my best making sure that... You you know, I can speak to all the fans, let them know everything that's going on, let them see what's happening in my life, because, I mean, I know a lot of them like to see what's happening. I know a lot of them enjoy it a lot, so I mean, why not? Mm. Not like it's harming anyone. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, you go out there and take pictures. It's fun to retweet, you know, charities. Make sure everyone knows you should be donating a little bit to these charities, even if it's just a dollar. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean... Um, do you feel like when, it, when people give you advice for this industry nowadays do you feel like that's a big part of what people kind of encourage you to do and focus on is the social media aspect do you feel like that's really important um, to help you in your career I do think it's really important I think the more actors and actresses focus on their social media the more the fans are going to be pleased because it's the better way that you're going to be able to interact with your fans yeah. Because if you try to do real life meetups, it's just kind of, it can be too messy at times, especially if you're someone like Hugh Jackman or Brad Pitt who has this huge, rabid fan base, then, you know, big meetups and things are very hard to do. Yeah. So if you have something like social media, it's a lot easier. You can let everyone feel like they're recognized, like make everyone happy. And I mean, why wouldn't you want to do that? Why wouldn't you want your fans to be happy? Yeah. Do you, so I do think that social media is going to help actors and actresses more once a lot more of them do realize how important it's going. Do you ever feel like you have to be like careful? Like, do you ever kind of think about like, oh, should I post something like this? Or should I run this by my parents to see if it's okay? Like, are you really careful about what you post? Um, Yeah. I almost always run things by my parents to make sure that they're okay with what I'm posting. But That's I mean, good. Usually it's fine. Usually there's nothing there I would say I can't put up there. Yeah, that's smart. I, I I think that's a good way to go. Parents parents have a lot of wisdom, and <laughs> you know even if they're not um as in, in as much in the industry as you, I'm sure they you know they have a good mind for for what is okay. So that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Listen, I want to give you props, though, Riley, because you seem to be a very educated, very well-mannered uh, young man yeah, who agreed. wise beyond your years, man. The way you approach your craft, the way you approach your fans, and just life in general, like you said, with with the responsibility of, of social media and charities and, and your interaction back and forth with your parents. You just seem to be a, a really well-adjusted, well-mannered young man, man. So, so congratulations on that and much respect for that because... You know, it can be hard. We were just talking about that before we uh, started interviewing you about how the dark side of the industry and how dangerous it can be sometimes. And, you know, it's nice to see level-headed young people, you yeah. know, keeping their stuff together and doing it right. Thank you, man. That's really nice to hear. I mean, it is, it is, it can be a very dangerous industry, as you said. Luckily, Scorpion was really fun and was really not dangerous at all. Yeah. By everyone on there was amazing everyone on there was really nice and fun to work with especially the crew i got to know a lot of the crew like and i'm sure you guys have seen on social media and everything paul as i usually just call him he was elias's stand-in his double right and i really got to know him i keep in very close contact with them and going to movies together so i mean i got to know a lot of the crew a lot of the guest stars too like you know Kevin Wiseman, Scott Porter, Spencer, like I said, you know? Mm -hmm. 
So, I mean, it was definitely very fun getting to know everyone. Probably was, That was probably my favorite part about the show, was getting to know everyone. Yeah, getting and to the, meet a lot of people. Yeah, and the interactions and relationships you've been able to build with them. Again, much respect, though, that you take the time and, and know the importance of the people behind the scenes, the crew, and, and, and the hard work that goes into, you know, making a show like that every day. It's nice to hear somebody your age recognize that and, and know that you have relationships and took the time to build those relationships with the behind the scenes people as well well yeah i mean a lot of people i really think a lot of people should appreciate how many people work on we and tv Absolutely. show sets not a lot of people might know this but we had 200 people just on set that you know per day so exactly. i mean that's just on set think about all the other hundreds of people who have to work in editing and all the other studios so i mean that's very true think about how much time and effort is being put into every episode and we got to get them out to you and you know two weeks maybe three Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a brilliant point. And, uh, and I, man, just a smart guy. You are yeah, a smart he's guy. Awesome. Uh, you know, I mean, he, he's got a strong grip on the industry. You, you really do have a strong grip on the industry and the way you approach it. Um, well done to your parents, sir. Yeah, well seriously. done to your parents. <laughs> and I think that's huge, right? I mean, you obviously have a strong support system and a strong family. Um, and, and that's important w- when you're trying to get into this industry, I think. Um, I would say it's incredibly helpful that my parents are so helpful in doing this, and they're always encouraging me, they're always helping me along the path, making sure that everything's good, making sure that, you know, nothing's going wrong with social media and stuff. I mean, my dad's a guitar player, as I'm sure you guys already know. Yep. I'm sure if you guys have looked at Robert's retweets and everything, you've probably seen him pop up on there sometimes. Oh, yeah. Help me along the way, being in a very familiar industry, you know, making sure I know a lot of the basics. My sister, as I said earlier, is also a photographer, and, you know, while she may not, you know, be an actor nowadays, being a photographer is what she's always wanted to do, so it's really nice to be able to see her doing what she always wants to do. Absolutely. I mean, she takes my headshot, so oh, anyone okay. likes if my headshots look, you can always ask her to take yours. Yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's nice to be able to see people live out their dream and do what they want to do, isn't it? I mean, that's what it's all about, right? I think so. I think following your dreams is one of the most important things in life. And if you can't do that, then I mean, what can you do? Exactly. Boom. Exactly. Okay, well, let me ask you then. If acting hadn't worked or or wasn't on the radar, what would you be doing or what what do you think? Where do you see yourself 10 years from now if you weren't acting? What would you do? If I wasn't acting, the profession I would want to have would be a game designer. Oh, right. cool. I think what would be most logical for me would be a lawyer. Oh. Well, 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 I could you see go. that. You're yeah. already very articulate yeah. and well-spoken. I could see you yeah. arguing cases with no problem at all. Like, <laughs> Well, hey, I mean, nowadays people do multiple different things. Who's to say you can't do all of that? That's right. Um, That's right. I mean, maybe one day I'll be able to. Maybe the best of both worlds one day, Riley. You can get a series where you play a lawyer or a film go. where you play a lawyer. That'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah. So any um, musical skills or inclination in, in, in your DNA from, from dad? Or is that something you ever thought about? Or I mean, of course I have thought about it at one point or another. And a long, long time ago, I did take some short piano lessons but after that point I never really thought about it I kind of focused more on acting because it was more what I wanted to do if you were looking at my Instagram or Twitter I went and saw Jeff Goldblum's show the other day because my cousin is playing with him at the moment and you know he knows how he knows how to play the piano but not a lot of people might know that not most people just you know associate him with acting but he's a musician too he knows how to play piano so i mean i think it'll be very valuable down the line absolutely so okay so uh let's see dream dream uh actors you or actresses you'd like to work with well some actresses that i want to work with i mean there's a lot out there to pick from. I think it would be really cool to work with Jennifer Lawrence. She seems like a oh, really yeah. down to earth person. For sure. So I think it would be a really fun experience, you know, playing something with her. Absolutely. Hmm. <laughs> it's a tough question, I know. It is a tough question. I think Brie Larson would also be Ooh, yeah. pretty fun to play with. But maybe one day I'll get something on one of them in it. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Brie Larson, are you a fan of Captain Marvel? I am. I think the first trailer looks really good. I've 
seen all the MCU movies except the Hulk. I don't think there's a reason to see the Hulk. Uh, <laughs> Riley, tell it yeah. like it is. Okay. So, I mean, I think she's... I think where a lot of people don't have high expectations for it because not a lot of people know Captain Marvel despite her being one of the most famous Marvel characters. I think just not a lot of people really know her backstory or really know her powers. Yeah. But I think once people do see her movie and see how good of an actress Brie Larson is, I think they'll start to appreciate Captain Marvel more, and I think a lot more people will especially start to appreciate Brie Larson more. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, she uh, phenomenal in, in The Room. Uh, I just was blown away by her in The Room. I'm a huge fan of hers as well. And I think you're right. I think a lot more people, because of Captain Marvel, are going to get to know who she is and recognize her talent on a much larger level. So I agree with you there completely. A couple other, you know, favorite actors and, and actresses that I'd love to meet. Like you said, it would be really awesome to meet Robert Downey Jr. Oh, yeah. He seems, he seems like he probably is just real-life Tony Stark. Yeah. yeah agreed. Definitely. <laughs> I think it would be really nice to meet Hugh Jackman. He's one of my favorite actors. Yeah, definitely. Not seeing him as Wolverine is going to be incredibly weird. Yeah. yeah right? <laughs> right? So, okay, I got to ask you because I'm lifelong Wolverine fan and I was... So thrilled that they finally got it right in the last film. How? What did you think of Logan? Did, w- big fan or? I am. I'm an incredibly big fan of Wolverine. The Logan film was really good. I think it was one of the best superhero films of the year. I feel like it should have gotten more attention. Obviously, it did. I just feel like it was kind of overshadowed by other Marvel products that came out that year. Agreed. But I mean, I think casting him as Wolverine is one of the best choices kind of ever made in the superhero industry. Yeah. Like, people like him or Robert Downey Jr., who just sort of, they kind of are the character, and they just, they play the character so well that by the point that we're out now, where we know Hugh Jackman isn't going to be Wolverine anymore, it's just, it's sad. It's weird to think about. I mean, who else could play him? Exactly. Who else could be Logan? And it's very weird to think about. Uh, hey, you know uh, Hugh Jackman's uh, uh, the his new movie, The Front Runner. Your buddy Spencer's in there. Did you know that? I did know that. I planned on seeing it. I saw the trailer the other day before Venom. I, if I'm being honest, besides seeing Spencer's tweets, I didn't know much about it. But after seeing the trailer, I'm very interested. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Yeah. I had- Jackman in it, so I would go and see it anyway. But yeah, yeah, me too. Unfortunately, Riley, I'm old enough to have known what it was about, but <laughs> I kind of lived through it. But uh, it does look fantastic. I'm like you. I'm a huge Hugh Jackman fan. Everybody here at Crazy Ants a huge Hugh Jackman fan. So um, we're, we're just like you. We'll pretty much go see everything he's in. So you know, do you mind if I ask you guys a few questions? Sure. No, yeah. fire away, man. I mean, what movies do you guys like to go and see? Oh my gosh. (laughs) Big superhero fans. Yeah, we're huge, huge superhero fans. Uh, So everything MCU, obviously. Um, Loved Deadpool. Uh, I mean, we could go around the room. Uh, Not a huge fan of the DC films. I'm more of a fan of the DC television side. Yeah. Um, Did enjoy Wonder Woman, though. Oh, yeah. Loved Wonder Woman. Absolutely loved Wonder Woman. Completely agree with you on that. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I just think the TV side has got it going on perfectly, and the film side needs a lot of work for DC. But, um... Uh, we just saw A Star is Born. We all absolutely loved A Star is Born. Um, hmm. Just, huh, that's, yeah, that's yeah. a good question. Wow. Um, I'm planning on seeing Venom. What did you think of Venom when you saw it? Did you like it? Well, I know this is a very controversial topic in the community right now. And I'm sure if you go on, you know, websites like IMDb or the Tomato Meter, you'll see it's not exactly the highest ratings. But a lot of the audience seemed to enjoy it. I definitely enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. I think the weirdest part about it was probably the low budget, you know? CGI wasn't always top-notch like an MCU film, but that has to do with the fact that they were not given a lot of budget to work with. Right. Yeah. So I kind of, I, I overlooked it, and I think once you do that, you can appreciate it a lot more. I think it was a really good superhero film at that. I feel like the relationship between Eddie and Venom was really cool. Something that in the comics isn't completely explained in most of the Venom comic series. Hmm. So I think that was really cool to see on screen. It's a lot easier to show than to tell. So okay, that was also really nice. Yeah, that's... I have a feeling I'll probably enjoy it. Uh, yeah, I, I think so. 
Um, let's see what else. Uh, Greatest Showman. We were huge fans of The Greatest Showman, obviously. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Oh man, just all kinds of films. I mean, we're huge film fans. Uh, TV side, it's all over the map for the TV side. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, obviously, I was a huge fan of Scorpion, as you could tell. Um, old school stuff. I mean, I love The West Wing. Uh, obviously, I was a huge fan of that. The Newsroom. Pretty much anything Aaron Sorkin did. Friends. Yeah, friends. Yeah. Friends. Yeah. friends. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty much anything like either comedy or fantasy, I'm in. Like I really love both of those genres a whole lot. Probably comedy the most. I love anything that's just got a great storyline and group of people. Parks and Rec, Seinfeld, stuff like that. Same. Me and my mom, we just came out watching all of Friends. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah, you can't see it, but Logan and Emily are cheering you on right now. They're huge <laughs> Friends fans, so... Um, and Emily, come on, you know, drop it. You know what you want to say. I'm addicted to Gilmore Girls, but <laughs> okay. Hi, my name is Emily, and I'm a Gilmore Girls <laughs> addict. Yeah, she's a Gilmore Girls addict. Um, but all kidding aside, we're huge Lauren Graham fans. Uh, what do you think of Lauren Graham? She's pretty awesome. Yeah, she is really awesome. Yeah. Lauren Graham was also in Parenthood, which, uh, you know, had Dax Shepard in it. Who yes. I'm sure Elle runs his own podcast right now. Which That's right. I listen to it. He's one of the many that I'm listening to at the moment. He, I think it would be really awesome if I could see him one day. Oh, yeah. He's like oh, a really yeah. nice guy. Yeah. He and his wife, they just seem like just the coolest people, and like they're so fun to be around. Yeah, Christian Bell seems like a really fun person, a really nice person to work with and be around. Oh, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm watching Good Place right now. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are. It's really good you got good taste man yeah <laughs> apparently in podcasts in movies in tv shows and uh and who to pick for your first podcast clearly this guy has got a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> he knows what's up he knows what's up <laughs> well listen man this has been a great a time man you're you're a lot of fun to talk to and we sure appreciate you coming on and hanging with us for a little while yeah seriously well it's been a lot of fun i mean my first podcast i can definitely say it was really fun well that's good. awesome yeah. good good and listen man serious open invite anytime you want to come back and just talk about anything you want to talk about definitely when you got some stuff when you land your next gig come back on and tell us all about it and you know we'll let everybody know and all kidding aside bro we're going to continue to push the save scorpion thing because i think all of us here along with your massive fan base we, we deserve a final season so yeah. completely true i completely agree with you i'll definitely i'll be back uh, there you go. I'll be back. Awesome. <laughs> I like it. I'll man. be back. <laughs> so listen, have a great rest of the day, man, and best of luck with everything you're trying to do in the future. And we look forward to talking to you again real soon, man. Same here. All right, awesome. man. Take care. Bye. Bye. You too. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Crazy. Bye. <laughs> wow. That was awesome. My favorite part of that was him talking about just going through the audition process and how much he still enjoys it. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, I, we've heard that over and over with a lot of the guests about how they're really professional auditioners. And yeah. like you just hear him, he's like, I, you know, I'm going to get something soon. Yeah, exactly. I've been auditioning. Like, you know, but the, just the positive attitude yeah. about that. And I, I, what really struck me is how articulate he was for yeah. 13 yeah. and kid. just turned 13. Yeah. And I mean, he's so well spoken yeah seriously. has such a grip on like you know yeah I, life i i mean I, I credit wholeheartedly the parents but i gotta feel like a lot of that came from working four years with all adults, all adults. Yeah. i mean you know yeah, around like seriously. he said you know he's normally with kids but this whole experience he got to hang out with all of these adults yeah. who you know even even his girlfriend was an adult yeah. so i mean like you know that was wild yeah I mean, way to go riley yeah. huh? yeah. like, yeah. i just got to show you like with with shows and, and movies and stuff like you really can't always tell how old people are no. you know what i mean and it's so funny to think about that like especially with old stuff like greece and all that like those yeah. people were like yeah. 30 years old and right. playing <laughs> teenagers but yeah. you just accept it because you're like okay i just <laughs> like how real he was though like yeah. you know he's like talking about that relationship and yeah how it was and how awkward it was yeah. but still how emotional and real it was yeah, for him that was, was like so genuine yeah. yeah i mean that that was really cool Hell so yeah. um well he's so young i know there's gonna be tons coming out for him exactly. like oh, yeah. i know he's anxious for his next thing but he's so young he's got, he's got plenty of time to grow that career and Absolutely. just be a kid for a while so Absolutely. i'm sure just, he'll be fine yeah, yeah. I, th I think yeah, yeah. and and just a, a really talented kid um and and i think he's gonna like you said he's gonna have a huge future and we're gonna have him back on numerous times i'm sure definitely he's gonna be talking about a bunch of stuff so definitely. thank you riley for coming on yeah and a uh, huge shout out to all the scorpion fans yeah you guys have been just amazing on social media for us and i know you guys are gonna be blowing up after we put this uh um 
interview out and yeah. you guys have been awesome so thank you so much for that and a uh, huge shout out to Riley's mom and uh, she's been awesome in helping us orchestrate the interview and and doing everything she was a gem so uh, thank you ma'am uh, we really appreciate that yep and uh, yeah yeah and uh, uh, by the way uh, vote for Riley vote for Riley that's right we're, we're gonna get Riley on America 2.0 uh, yeah. season 2 we're gonna hashtag get illegitimate son that's right <laughs> <laughs> I like it his little evil like uh, uh, to be honest that, <laughs> that, would, that would be, be really great. entertaining yeah, yeah. Like, that was awesome he even kind of got that weird little creepy voice when yeah. he said it's like to be honest <laughs> I would like that that would be awesome oh um, yeah that's, that's so, so good stuff hell yeah all right we have the one and only Wayne Pere on the show today <laughs> Yes, that is right. You have seen him in Cloak and Dagger, <laughs> Spider-Man Homecoming, a whole bunch of stuff, guys. I can't wait to get to talk oh, to yeah. him. This one's going to be fun. We got the little uh, Louisiana connection with Hell him yeah. and, you know, and Marvel. I mean, come on. Cloak and Dagger is like hot as shit right yeah, now. And seriously. he's like the, the baddie on there. So can't wait to talk to him about that. This is going to be yeah. a fun one. It this is, is going to be a fun one. Hell yeah. All right. Here he is. Hello. Hey, is this Wayne? No, this is AT&T. You have a delinquent balance. <laughs> uh, Damn it, they found me. <laughs> can we extend my plan? Oh, man. Uh, click. Hey, no. <laughs> How are you today, man? I'm well. I'm oh, well. How awesome. Well, he's going to fit right into this group, yeah, isn't he? Is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us today and coming inside the Crazy Ant Farm with Hell us. Yeah. And uh, we were going to warn you that we're crazy, but it looks like you're off to a good start. So, okay, yeah, I assumed with that 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 uh, that name. That's there right. Yeah. That's right. Um, a little eccentric. So I guess first of all, let's just say. Uh, we recently saw you this past weekend in Venom, and huge congratulations on the opening weekend, man. Um, well, thank you. Yeah, yeah that, that was, yeah, was pretty awesome. epic, man. Eighty million, well done. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I hope we, we keep it up for the second weekend. I know it did well internationally as well. So yeah, yeah. that's yeah, good sure. to hear. Absolutely, and 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 I'm on American Horror Story tonight. I think. Oh snap! Oh, wow. so, oh, boom! Look at that. Yeah, I think yeah. that one's coming back on. Awesome. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, by the way, just a little little side note here. You're now the second guest we've had on the show who died in Venom. So that's wow, you know. <laughs> yeah, we like, had uh, Sam Medina on earlier, and you know, he also picked uh, the best. Yes, I know, know Sam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a friend of mine. Yeah. We got a trend to go and you know, yeah, if you've do. died yeah. in Venom, come on the show. On the you're show. in the you're in the killed by Venom club. <laughs> that's yeah. right. That's right. There man. you go. So, uh we're really excited to talk about you though. We got a Louisiana connection, you know, obviously we're we're just about now we're outside of New Orleans or whatever, but uh I've spent the majority of my life in Louisiana, South west louisiana jason's from new orleans um my daughter's getting ready to go to lsu go tigers so oh, <laughs> so we've got a yeah, lot of I, connection I, I, there that's We're, where i went to school yeah LSU, yeah baton rouge, yeah yeah I, yeah I lived the majority of my life in uh lafayette and baton rouge and uh so uh, yeah so you're a coon ass like yeah me. yeah <laughs> darn right man go cajuns huh? yeah. yeah i'm from homa uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. From Homa. Yeah, I'm, I'm converted there. though. So I have a bunch of friends. What do you mean you're Homa? converted? I'm, ca- I'm, I'm from Syracuse, New York. So oh, get the hell. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you're a Yankee. You're a transplant. I, yeah, well, Damn I'm an honorary. That's right. There. I'm an honorary Kunas because they okay. don't take me back up in New York anymore. So, but uh, <laughs> oh, well, good. Okay. Yeah. There you go. I love New York. Get out of here, man. It's great. Oh yeah, no. I great lo- state. Love where I'm from, you know. But I do love the South. I, I'm. Definitely consider Louisiana my home. So. Converted Southerner. I am a converted oh, cool. Southerner, man. So, yeah, cool. let's talk about that a little bit, though. Uh, born in Homa, so that's pretty awesome. Um, and LSU. So, um, did you go to LSU specifically for drama? Or, I mean, was acting even on the list of what you knew you always wanted to do? Or how did that all come about? How did you get started? No, absolutely not. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a, a, a pure accident. I, um, when I got out of high school, when I graduated... I uh, decided I wanted to do something a little more adventurous. And, uh, you know, my siblings had gone straight off to college. And I said, eh, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work offshore. I'm going to be a commercial diver. Oh. So uh, I went to school in Houston and uh, trained to, to, to be a commercial diver. You know, the hard hat with the hose going down, the whole thing. Oh, right. That's cool. Uh, at the time, they called them rat hat divers, I think, uh, because one of the one of the helmets they used um, – but anyway, uh, yeah. So I did that for a few years, and uh, which is a tough life, man. That's a tough. Uh, that's a tough living, and really brutal on your body. Thankfully, I was just in it for a short time. But um, yeah, I quickly discovered that that wasn't my thing. You know, to be out on a boat or a barge for months at a time with a bunch right. of guys. You know, it just wasn't my uh, my bag. So um, right. anyway, 
so I, I stopped doing that. I went to Nickel State initially, which is in Thibodeau. Yep, Thibodeau. About you know, 11 or 12 miles from, from where I was living in Homa. And uh, then the next semester, I went up to LSU, which my uh, two brothers, my two older brothers and my sister were there at the time. And um, I go up there. It was in January. And uh, I'm in their apartment, my brother's apartment. I moved in with them. And uh, I'm going through the catalog, the course catalog. And I get to the speech section, and there's right at the top, it's acting 1001. I was like, what? You know, I had no <laughs> idea. I really didn't. I was, I was completely clueless. I had no idea. I never even was in my wheelhouse. You know, I never thought about acting, Never, just never considered it. Right. And, you know, I didn't think about theater in college. I wasn't thinking about any of that stuff, you know. I grew up in a small town. So I'm there. I'm thinking, well, this is freaking cool acting they teach that really in college so I said, that sounds like something that uh, might be fun so uh so i started studying with a man named john dennis who was a legend at lsu just a an amazing teacher an amazing director amazing coach and um so uh, thankfully he was there at the time and uh so i trained under john he was my uh you know my mentor mm -hmm. and uh did a lot of theater there and um when it came time to leave uh, he said, I think you should head to L.A. So I said, all right, I'm heading to L.A. And that's Here what happened. You go. Awesome. Well, yeah, well, okay, well, that's, yeah, that's, uh, I love hearing stories like that, though, where initially it wasn't even on the thought process or on the radar of what you wanted to do, and yet there it is. You've yeah. got the talent, you get out there, and and have clearly turned it into a successful career. I, I love hearing stories like that, you Just know. Just kind of stumble it's, upon it. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I can only hear one of you. I can hear a little low. Uh, um, someone. I, I, there are two of you. Two or three of you there. Oh right? yeah. There's uh, five or six of us here. <laughs> there's multiple. Okay, there's yeah, multiple. So We're actually AT and T. Can, You've been uh, talking to us. Some, <laughs> I can Customer hear some service. So I, I, I can't quite hear what they're saying, so I don't know if I'm. Oh yeah. No problem. We'll, we'll have them. We'll boost them up a little bit. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um. Um. But yeah, yeah. It was a complete accident, and uh, yeah, I stumbled into it. And uh, just kind of found my way, and thankfully, I've uh, been able to make a career out of it. And Absolutely, stay working, yeah. The definition know? of a happy accident, huh? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, and uh, so let's talk about it a little bit. Uh, Steven Soderbergh, you you eventually were able to work with, who's huge in Louisiana, um, and we're able to work with Steven. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that. Um, and we were all dying to know because of uh, recently with him um, shooting Unsane on the iPhone. We've got some questions for you about that also. But talk a little bit about how uh, that relationship. Okay, so hell, yeah, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't see the film. I know a little bit about it, but, uh, um, but yeah, Stephen was actually at LSU when I was there. His father was the dean of one of the colleges, and I don't remember which college, but he was a big muckety muck on right. campus. Ah. So uh, Stephen was just a kid, you know, he's just floating around. And uh, I think what happened is that he studied with, um, there was a, a documentary filmmaker there, and I don't recall the gentleman's name. Um, and I think he did a lot of wildlife stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and he happened to be at LSU at the time. And, it, you know, this guy apparently was a genius. And Stephen kind of was under his wing. And uh, that's my understanding of, of how it all started with, with Stephen um, and, and gravitating into filmmaking. And um, so, and this is before Sex Lies and Videotape. Right. And, you know, we do little short projects with him. I did, I did like a sh one short with him and my buddy David Jensen, who's close friends with him, you know, he did a few shorts with him. And, uh, you know, then, then Sex Lies happened and everything, everything blew up. But he remembered us, you know, there was a group of us, David Jensen, Joe Kress, myself, Eddie Jemison, um, and he referred to us as his Baton Rouge Mafia. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he would just plug us Epic. in. I didn't know Eddie Jimmons. To films, you know. So we, we would just get a phone call. Hey, yeah, Stephen wants you to come do this thing. So, uh, yeah, it was great. It was great. Um, I haven't worked in a couple of years with him, but, you know, he kind of flounders between retiring and then doing all this experimental stuff. And, exactly. Uh, but just a phenomenal filmmaker. And, and, you know, if not my favorite, one of my favorite directors to work with because he's so... Um, he's so hands off in general. I, I imagine it depends on the actor, but uh, his direction is very, very minimal. It, he yeah. just casts. He casts well. You know, he knows what he wants. Yeah, definitely. And he casts who he wants, and he trusts the actor to to deliver what he needs. And he, he does direct, and he does shape things, and yeah. you know, give you a note every now and again. But 
I can bear. I can't even remember. I remember in uh, in traffic. You know, there was one moment where we did our little camera rehearsal, and he said, "Yeah, Wayne, look, there's some stuff on this table, and I don't know. Maybe you could pick something up if you want. <laughs> maybe you want. Here. And that was it. You know, yeah. maybe something over here, and then uh, you know, yeah. And so then in, we're we're shooting. So an actor's uh, director. Uh, uh, does, is he a fan of ad libbing? He kind of gives you guys some free space to take take it in a direction that you feel more comfortable, or uh yeah yeah i would say in general i mean a, a lot of the scripts he's working with are, 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 are pretty solid you yeah know? so um uh so i you know i rarely you know add it too much uh and in general for the actors who are listening out there it's something you have to be very careful with um especially in television they they're really sticklers for dialogue a lot of the shows um and even on film, you know, you can't assume that you just go up in there and start making up stuff. Right. right. Um, uh, I, uh, you know, I'll I'll make slight alterations occasionally. Occasionally, if there's something, the rhythm of the line is just doesn't feel right. You know, I might change a word or flip two words around, or you know. But I'm, I'm usually really cautious about that kind of stuff. And every now and again, you get on a set where you know they throw something. I mean, Venom was a perfect example. You know, we would, you know, we'd come in to shoot something and he, you know, uh, Ruben would come up to me and say, yeah, yeah, Wayne, I'm going to have you do this thing. You know, you're going to do this part right here. We added this piece and he would do that shit all the time where he just throw <laughs> stuff at me and which is fine. But it's also depending on how, how, you know, emotionally deep the scene or overwrought it is. It's right. like, oh, wait a minute. Ooh, really? OK, I got to pull that stuff up. And um, but. So I guess as an actor, it's, it's good to be prepared to do that sort of thing, but know that you're not always going to get the opportunity to do that. But yeah, we would just, you know, he'd be like, yeah, yeah, you could say something here. You know, I'm like, well, wait a minute. Yeah, when you're put on the spot, sometimes it's, it's challenging. Like, right. Okay, wait, yeah. well, you're trying to figure, okay, wait, wait, the relationship is this, and this is what's happening. And, um, but um, yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely good to be prepared. But as far as Steven is concerned, uh, um, yeah, he, he, he's, he's relatively loose, uh, but, you know, you can't count on that always. Right, yeah, but, right. Uh, definitely, you know, definitely. He's definitely an actor's, actor's director. Well, and I'm glad you you brought up Venom. Just uh, I, I loved your portrayal in Venom, and I thought from the get-go, uh, you did a really good job with emotion on the face because, it, you know, you didn't have a whole lot of dialogue at first, and right. you, you immediately were able to convey, at least when we were talking amongst ourselves after watching the movie or everything, your character, you immediately kind of conveyed someone who was in conflict. Right. Like, uh, you know, you're like, I'm doing this, but I'm not sure I really want to be doing this. This guy's nuts. <laughs> yeah, kind of a thing. So, <laughs> And we thought you did a really good job of portraying that without saying a word. The constant looks nice. on the face or the kind of expression that you'd give this guy. You know, you got to be like, oh, I, I got to be enthusiastic about this, but really I, I'm not at all wanting to do this. And uh, it's really hard. We've talked about this with past guests. Uh, to act without saying anything, to be able to convey that emotion, you know, strictly through the movement of your body or your face, and right. um, yeah, brilliant job, man. I love the character. Okay, well, thanks for the finish. thanks for the props. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, uh, it, it's a, uh, uh, and they did cut a few things, just FYI. So uh, there was there was a, a confrontation that I had with Riz oh. um, that they they did. Uh, they did take out, but I understand why, you know, when you're making a film of that size and you have, you know, Time. you know, obviously a supporting character, you have other characters that have to be there and have to be established. And right. Pacing the director has to make a choice about, well, how many people can the audience invest in? And is this going to go anywhere? If I get them to invest in this guy, is it going to go far enough? Um, so, you know, it cut a little, uh, a chunk mm -hmm. out of there that I really was hoping would have stayed, but, uh, but I understand why he did it. But yeah, as far as that's concerned, you know, listening is is one of our most important tools as an actor uh so if one is is truly listening well, the, and the, for the first time every time um and you have a point of view like what you're talking about it, it should take care of itself yeah you know right. you shouldn't have to think about what your face is doing or your body's doing or you know if you really listen and allow yourself to live through it the first time every time you know, something's something's going to happen. You know, something's going to, you know, take place. And for actors, that that's, you know, and, and still to this day for my journey, because um, we want to, we want to, often we want to play it safe. We want to, um, uh, we think we're hedging our bets when we, when we do, um, 
what am I trying to say? If we, um, there are traps that we can fall into as an actor. Right. And we could do some, what I would call some high quality pretending, you know, where we're not really fully in it, but we're like, okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to pretend and, and lie a little bit, basically. And, uh, and you can get away with that some of the time, what some of the time. Uh, and again, if it's high quality pretending, you could probably get away with it a, a, a more often than not. But the best I think the real is juice in the acting is to, is to forget that shit. Don't play it safe and take the chance of looking like an idiot and fucking it up. Yeah. And, and, and that's where the gold is, you know, so that the longer I do it, the more, you know, uh, more insistent I am with myself about that to like, like, no, 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 I'm not going to take the shortcut. I'm not fully feeling it. I'm going to indicate a little something here. I'm like, no, no, what I, what I, wherever I'm at, it's going to have to be enough. And I'm going to do my work in between the take and, and, you know, whatever I have to do, if, if I'm not as invested as I should be, then, you know, I'll, uh, I'll have another shot on, on the next one and see where it is, but not judging it and just, uh, just trusting whatever's there is there. And, uh, and, uh, and living, living on the edge a little bit, you know, yeah. a lot of times it's scary. It feels like it's scary. Cause you're like, ah, oh, you're not in control of it, but that's where the best work is. And that's, that's all I'm interested in. You know, I want to do the best work that I can. And sometimes it makes it to the screen and sometimes it doesn't, but I, you know, I don't have control of that more often than not so it's nothing i could do yeah i love the analogy though we have a lot of actors uh that listen to the show and a lot of young actors trying to get into the industry and i I love the analogy of the pretending and or the lying yeah i think that that's raw and real and i think that the advice that you just gave throughout that is solid you know sometimes it is about taking a chance and 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 making that leap and doing what you think is best even if you fuck it up. And I think that's that's a great analogy and a great advice for and, people that are listening and trying to get in. And listening listening is key because and the best acting is reacting. Right, right. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So so th- like I said, that's your most valuable skill as an actor to truly listen to someone. Yeah. And uh, yeah, take the chance. Allow you know you want to get to your impulses. You want to get to your instincts. Right. And that's what keeps you moment to moment. That's what keeps you in the pocket, you know, and, and really living through something. And that's our job, you know. We're, we're supposed to live truthfully under imaginary circumstances. And the only way to do that is, is to throw away the freaking safety net and to listen and just freaking, you know, really do what you what you say you're doing for the reason you've given yourself. Which is, this is all Meisner stuff, which is my favorite, right. my favorite discipline, discipline, my favorite approach. And that's what I would, you know, to your young actors or other actors who are listening and still you know, coming up through the ranks. Um, I mean, some people say, ah, no training, blah, blah, blah. But look, all the great actors that I know, you know, Mm -hmm. and I respect, they've had some sort of training. Right. And they may have started, lucked into something and not had any. But then I guarantee, you know, they've gotten with some coach somewhere, some brilliant coach who's helped them, you know, refine their their skills. And you want to be with the right teacher because you can learn some bad habits. Right. But... I would encourage them to, to find a <laughs> good group of dedicated actors with a good teacher Very true. And, and, and train, you know, get in there. And it's also, you're at the gym. It gives you an opportunity to work out and be prepared when you have the, have the opportunity. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. It's That's a trend on the show as well through, throughout several dozen of our guests. It's definitely Take a classes, muscle. train, you know, every opportunity, continue to hone the craft and the skill. Yeah, definitely it, throughout, uh, it's wholeheartedly def- agree. It's definitely a muscle. It has to be exercised. Yeah. Wait, I'm sorry. What was that last part? I said it's definitely a muscle that has to be exercised. And yeah, be, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've trained on and off throughout the years. I've been doing this, and, you know, I'm going on, I mean, 30 years in the business, you know, I was in film and television, but, you know, doing theater before then. So, you know, in not too many years. It's going to be 40 years that I've been doing this stuff. Wow. So, wow. Uh, you know, it's, it's it's been a long time. And, and uh, I still, you know, to this day, I'm probably going to jump in a class you know, pretty soon, just to, just a scene study class, just to work out, just to yeah. get in there and, and do some stuff. Definitely. Um, but it's been it's been quite a few years since I've been in class. But uh, well, actually, no, I, I did take something with uh, with John Dennis, who I was speaking of earlier. Mm-hmm. He had a, a, a little thing, um, you know, a little summer thing uh, I did with a couple of friends, uh, you know, maybe six or seven years ago, um, and that was great to get to get back in with him. But 
but yeah, do the work, man. Do the work, and any opportunity you have to act, you know, on stage and class, get out there and do it. You know, yeah, yeah. absolutely, definitely, definitely. Now, taking going back a little bit, backtracking. What do you think about shooting movies on an iPhone? Since the quality is just so good nowadays on your phone, what do you think? Compare that to like shooting it on a red camera or something like that. Well, you know, I think it's I think it's it's wonderful that we we have the ability to do it. I think, you know, I wish we would have had this, you know, years ago when I was first starting. Uh, because now there's no excuse for anyone who wants to be a filmmaker, actor, whatever, to shoot their own thing, you know, to take charge of their destiny in this business and make their own, you know, create their own stories and do their own work. So I love that you have this tool that virtually everyone has in their pocket uh, that they can make a film with. Yeah. Now, the downside is, I mean, you still need good audio. So you're going to have to freaking, you know, yeah. you, you can record stuff on the audio on the phone, but it's, you know, it's, that's kind of hit or miss. And it's still a very small sensor. So, you know, you have issues with, and you can do some stuff in post, but you have issues with depth of field. If you want to, you know, focus the audience's attention on something, right. you know, on the foreground and not, and kind of blur the background elements. As you guys know, you're familiar with depth of field. Absolutely. You, know, you don't necessarily have that possibility. I know they make attachment lenses, you know, that you can put on. Mm-hmm. I've researched some of those because um, I also can use my phone to tape an audition if I need to tape an audition. Right, uh, definitely. But yeah, I would say audio is, is, is of concern. And uh, and the small sensor size mean, means that, you know, in low light, uh, you have very small pixels, so they're not catching as much light. So you're going to have some pretty extreme degradation in your image unless you're lighting the thing. So I think it's great that it's there. Uh, I personally... Um, you know, if I can afford to shoot with another camera, I would shoot with another camera. I would right. shoot on a DSLR. You know, I have a, a Fuji X-T2 that I use, um, and then you have the new X-T3 out. I think that's a great little camera. But, you know, you have the, the little Panasonics with the GH5. Mm-hmm. Great freaking camera. It's, I mean, it's a, I think it's a four-third sensor on that. So it's not huge. It's not a full-frame full, full, full frame sensor. But, you know, uh, you'd still significantly larger than the sensor that's in your phone right um so i mean for steven you know he can shoot on whatever the hell he wants yeah, yeah. <laughs> so for him it's like oh this will be fun right you know, i get to shoot with this thing and he can do it and somebody's gonna look at it because he's freaking steven soderberg right yeah. i think right. i'm gonna few i'm gonna shoot a on a view master <laughs> but yeah. if you're joe schmuck you know it's better the higher quality that you have the more avenues you have to to distribute it absolutely so, if you want to make money from the thing, then, you know, because uh, you still need to light it. You still need some exactly. kind of crew. Right. You know, if you want to do it well, you need, you're going to have to spend something on it. Yeah. Right. Um, um, so uh, for me personally, I would go with, uh, you know, if I can afford it, if that's all I can afford, then that's what I shoot with. But I, if I can afford something else, then I'd shoot with something uh, with a little more firepower, you Agreed. know, better in low light. Um, and, uh uh, yeah, more lens options. Absolutely. Uh, so I can control the depth of field a little, little better. And, uh, uh, but yeah, you know, he's Steven. And, and I tell you one thing with Steven, cause I worked on, um, uh, what's the name of that film? Um, what the hell was it? Uh, uh Oh, full frontal was the name of there it. There you go. So we did full frontal on, I think it was a mini DV rig. Wow, I'm okay. On, I have it in front of me. But I think it was Mini DV. Um, but Steven's all about, you know, the less people he has around him, the better. Right. So right. he doesn't Small like group. setting up a monitor on set because if you have a monitor set up, then everybody's going to be sitting at the monitor. Right. And you have producers there and they're going to be saying, why don't we do this? And why don't we do that? <laughs> and he, don't, he doesn't want to listen to that. So, <laughs> you know, he doesn't like even to have a monitor set up on set. Uh, and he likes to operate a lot of the time. So he's seeing what he's getting, mm-hmm. uh, because he likes to streamline the process. He doesn't like, you know, dragging around that big tail, you know, when he's making a film. Now right. he does big films, obviously, but I know for a fact, he prefers to do it on a smaller scale. He has more fun and less people right. to deal with. Uh, and it's just, uh, you know, a, a, a quicker process. You're, you're, you know, you're moving through stuff more quickly and, uh, you know, which is one thing about the red too. I think that he embraced, um, you know, less changing of mags and all yeah, that stuff. Right. Um, and 
Um, because he was really the first major filmmaker that I, I think, or was it Steven Jackson or something? I think it was Soderbergh. But he was the first one to put any juice behind the red, which you know kept it in business, and yeah, which absolutely. really made the red camera. Absolutely. Um, so. Well, we should let our listeners know too that you. I mean, you're you're you talk from experience because uh, to let let them kind of know you're an award winning filmmaker yourself behind the camera. Um, you know, you've done some shorts and a feature film. Um, so you're, you're speaking from experience on the other side of the camera as well. Um, and I thought it was interesting. You're clearly a fan of digital. I, you know, you mentioned earlier in the, in the interview, you know, almost 40 years in the biz and kind of stuff. Uh, I was curious about your thought between film and digital and you, were you okay with the digital conversion and, and, or are you a film kind of a guy? But yeah, I mean, cause you went into great detail there with uh, depth of field and, and the, and the different issues that between film and digital. So just kind of curious right. about what would you shoot on film or are you okay with doing everything on digital? Yeah, I, lo- I love film. I think film is, and I think most, most filmmakers um, really appreciate the quality and the, and the textures that you get mm-hmm. in film. Uh, so I have nothing, nothing against film at all. I, you know, I, I love the medium and I love the richness, 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 excuse me, that it gives. But I also think, you know, the newer digital cameras, I mean, from an audience perspective, they don't care. They don't know. You know, if you can make out the faces and they're clear and crit, I mean, they, that's that they're they, they stay behind the story. You know, if you yep. have a great story and it's shot well and it's lit and you can hear it, then it doesn't matter what you shoot it on. Um, and uh, but I do love film. I do appreciate film. Um, I think probably from an ecological standpoint, um, I, I appreciate digital that it that it cuts out you know some of you know all those those chemicals that you're using to process the film and to mm-hmm. create the film now of course you know we have all these computers around and that's you know there's a lot of things involved you know chemicals and whatnot involved with building a computer right but uh, uh, I would have to think in general that uh, um, the the um, the digital uh, revolution is, is, is cleaner than the film revolution was, you know, at the time. So I appreciate that aspect of it, the ecological from the, from an ecological standpoint. Yeah. You know, I appreciate that. Absolutely. So before we jump back into a lot of your just insanely awesome credits that you have under your belt as an actor, because there's a ton of them that just jumped out to all of us that we were excited about, but um, behind the camera, uh, do you have anything coming up? Are you, are you going to go back behind the camera anytime soon and, and do some more stuff behind or, what you got going on? Well, right? I, I hope so. It's been a little bit of a, it's been kind of a long hiatus. Uh, I have a few things floating around, but nothing, nothing is, is greenlit just yet. So, um, so hopefully, yeah, I do intend to get back behind the camera. I enjoy it. You know, I, in a lot of ways it's, um, I mean, there's more responsibility. Absolutely. And you're more hands on in the story, which is again, one of the things that I like about it. You're, you're deep in it and you, you have at least, you have more to say about the final product as a director than you do as an actor. So I like that bit of control that you're, that you have. Um, and being an actor, I, I like working with other actors. You know, I like, you know, casting folks that are rock solid kick-ass actors and creating an environment where they can play and achieve, you know, the, you know, their best, you know, achieve their potential, whatever Absolutely. they have to offer. So um, I, I love, um, creating that that kind of you know space for them to do their work definitely and it's really fulfilling you know it's really fulfilling to to be a part of that um and you know as a director uh i don't have to come on set knowing oh yeah i got that really freaking intense scene today i'm gonna have to rip my <laughs> yeah rip my heart out and leave it on the freaking you know set um so i don't have that kind of pressure where i have to deliver some you know, some heart wrenching scene or something, right. which is fine. I could do it, but, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, one of the benefits of directing that I, I don't have to worry about that side at all. I can just focus on what's in front of me and, and do this thing, you know, whatever it is. Yep. Yep. Okay. So let's jump back into the other side a little bit. You have been in some extremely popular shows. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you're talking about, you, you know, uh, third rock from the sun friends, NYPD blue, uh, Star Trek Voyager, uh, The Flash, um, Cloak and Dagger, American Horror Story, like you said, Nip Tuck. I mean, the the resume is insane. Um, and congratulations on that. I mean, it, it, equal and equal opportunity oh, uh, t- comic book thing is you doing both. D- you did DC. You're doing DC and 
Marvel. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're going to be. I know. I know. In, uh... I'm glad I crossed crossed that uh, <laughs> that uh, little you know little little line there. I, yeah, it's good to be doing both. I'm I'm very excited to see Watchmen. By the way, I think. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty badass. Uh, agreed, um, yeah. agreed. All of us too. We're all big comic book geeks here, so um, we're 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 extremely excited about that. So that brings up Cloak and Dagger for me because I just uh, I am loving Cloak and Dagger. Um, just I think it's an absolutely brilliant show. I was surprised at how dark and gritty it is on Freeform. I was a little nervous at first, but I think it just fit. I think it could personally just drop right into the Netflix Marvel shows. It's got that tone and grit and feel to it. Um, so I was really excited to see that and uh, congratulations on that because I mean, you're, you're the baddie kind of, you know, <laughs> you, you killed Tandy's yeah, dad, one of them, you know, one of them. Yeah. yeah no, so. it, was, it was fun. So, no, you know, initially there's a lot of, you know, I'm just sort of, um, the mystery guy that's floating around. Right. Uh, but it was fun. There was some, just some crazy, you know, I don't want to ruin it for any of your, your audience that hasn't seen it, but just some crazy sequences that I was able to do in some of the earlier, um, episodes oh absolutely that were just a blast and for a for a coon ass to go down in in louisiana and be you know uh in a suit in right. waiters you know uh just trudging around in the freaking shallows in yeah. lake pontchartrain <laughs> yeah it was just the freaking best day of my career i have to be honest you know it's just a little crazy little sequence but it was so it's such a blast you know oh yeah um and they were, everybody's like, well, sure you can do it. Can you get, you know, it's a slippery it's shit, man. You kidding me? I grew up doing this Yeah, stuff, do you know man. where I'm from? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, well, uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was, it was, it was in the late fall. Was it? I think it was late fall when we shot that, that, that sequence. Or was so it was still 80 no, degrees. No, it was in the wintertime. <laughs> but the water was nice and cold. So, you know, I was getting that nice cool cooling effect from the water because it was, it was warm outside. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was that was a fun day. Oh yeah, and anyway. listen, I love the care. And uh, okay, just spoilers for our listeners. I we're just gonna put it out there. You know, Tandy kind of fucked you up, <laughs> but uh, you, yeah, not so out, not out of seen how fucked up I am. Yeah, we'll <laughs> exactly. But not out of the realm of possibility of a possible return. I mean, you know, so it, exactly, exactly. I mean, we, we went pretty far with that storyline, so. Um, uh, we'll see what happens this year. We'll see what they have in mind. I know they're they're shooting already now, so uh, yeah, yeah. We'll just uh, we'll see what they have in mind. Well, I'm kind but of I'm glad you for enjoyed you. the show. I, I, you know, I, I um, and I'm glad they picked it back up again. And and uh, um, uh, yeah, some some just some some nice folks involved with it. And uh, uh, yeah, I appreciate the fact that it was edgy. Yeah, as well, because I was like you, I was concerned with it being a free form show and. And if they pull the teeth out of it, right? But I mean, uh, yeah, I think they were pretty true down, right? to, um, you know, to this to the original uh, sort of idea that was presented to me. So I think uh, I think it's uh, it all worked out. And and uh, and Joe uh, Pekaski is, is um, um, just a really sweet guy. I worked with him on Underground as well. Right. You know, he was one of the creators on that show, and um, so I just wish him the best. You know, he's he's a good dude. And he looks after me. So. Yeah. Um, you know, well, I'm pulling well. for you, man. I hope you I hope you do come back. I'm loving the whole idea and uh, potential talk of a crossover with Runaways. I, I think it's just there's so many opportunities there. And I think you're like you said, they went so far with your character and that storyline. I feel like we'd be cheated if we didn't have a follow through there somewhere. So I'm hoping, man, I, I hope you come back and we yeah, see you. Yeah, fingers crossed, man. Fingers yeah. crossed. <laughs> so, um, yeah. OK, well, speaking of you, you did. Uh, how's Matthew McConaughey? Uh, <laughs> You got to work with Matthew McConaughey down here as well, right? Choo-choo. Free State of Jones. Well, wait a minute now. He wasn't because uh, we both worked on Free State of Jones. Yeah. Let me think if there was something else that I did with him. I think that was it. Uh, yeah. Uh, because I didn't do uh, Buyers Club. I didn't do. Yeah, I think it was just Free State of Jones. We actually we didn't cross paths. Wow. Uh, we were on different days. Bummer. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I've heard great things about him. I heard he's a really nice. Uh, Nice guy, and and speaking of nice guys, and I know he gets a bad rap, but Christian Bale was great too. You know, I know he has some some history, but uh, yeah. I, I have to say, my experience with with Bale on uh, The Big Short was great. He well, was you very go. gracious, very generous, and uh, just you know, just a uh, regular Joe, you yeah. know, as they say. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, he's a good dude. 
Well, that's good to hear because I think sometimes, yeah, you, you get these reputations and you start to hear these, uh, you know, these things and these bad, you know, stories I, I, come out and and which may or may not be true. You know, you once a reputation gets out there, so I it's think, good to hear. I think right. his reputation comes out of the fact that he's one of these actors that is always in character most of the time, and people don't really know how to deal with him on set. Yeah, potentially so. Right. It's good to hear that he's a good guy, though. So, uh, you know, th- that's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's a great guy, and, and well, they do have that video of him on uh, one of the, I think it was a Batman thing where he, no, <laughs> it was Terminator, <laughs> yeah. But right. you know, like I said, my experience with him was good, and I was talking to somebody else about this the other day. Um, you know, like uh, one of you was saying about him uh, being in character, and and yeah, you know, some of the, these things that we're shooting, there are days where. You know, we're doing some real intense scene, and I was working on a film, just an independent thing called Sound Man, which you guys should uh, check out if, if you haven't. It's floating around somewhere. I'm not sure where it is uh, online, but uh, but it's just a, a crazy little independent. You know, I'm kind of a Travis Bickle kind of character. You know, a little taxi driver ish. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, we were shooting this thing, and we were in Albuquerque. In the winter time, it was like January or February, so it's pretty cold because that's high desert. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Very cold. And um, we're shooting this scene where I go into a pawn shop, I break into a pawn shop, and uh, I won't tell you all the details, but the owner wakes up. It's it's early in the morning. He wakes up, and there's a confrontation, and then there's a scuffle, and then uh, you know something happens to him, and I and I take off out of there, and um, we were doing it as a wonder. You know, mm-hmm. it was an independent thing and also just made sense. It felt right. You know, he didn't need a lot of coverage. And we do one of the takes. It might have been the second take and it was really coming together. And uh, it was feeling good, you know, from an acting standpoint, from my point, it felt good. And I bust out the door and there's somebody standing outside the back door. You know, there's not supposed to be anybody there. <laughs> and he's standing there in this take and in the moment i'm like shit man what the hell is this guy doing here man we're shooting and so i was pretty pissed off but that was the extent of it you know i probably screamed like fuck man we just we're doing this thing why is this locked up you know yeah um but that was it you know i didn't go on and on and start tearing people a new one or any of that stuff but in the moment you know i'm in this heated scene it's intense i just got in the scuffle this fight with this person i'm running you know I mean, I'm all freaking jacked up on testosterone yeah. and adrenaline. And in that moment, I'm like, fuck, you know? Yeah. Um, now, you know, it's one little moment. Nobody even remembers it other than me, I'm sure. sure. But, you know, and I'm a, I'm easy to work with on set. I don't cause any problems. But, you know, if you're freaking in it, you know, you're fully invested in, in this thing and you're doing – I mean, sometimes – you know, the lid comes off a little bit because, right. you know, that's, I mean, it's our job to be volatile and, and absolutely and right. impulsive and, and, you know, dangerous sometimes. And so, you know, if a little bit leaks out around the edges every now and again, it leaks out, you know, yeah. and if you're on a set and you're trying to do your work, it's just like any other department. You know, I don't get in front of the crew's way when they're moving stuff around. It's in between takes or after the camera rehearsal, I get out of their way. You know, I'm like, no, this is their set. Right. It's theirs. Right. I'm going to move out of their way. I'm going to let them do their work. I'm not going to get in their way. And they're always really nice. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm in your way. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Get through here. Now, on the other side of that, when I'm shooting, when we're doing the take, it's your set. I don't want some freaking crew guy to be sitting over on the side in my eye line on his freaking iPhone. You know? I'm like, wait a minute. I'm trying to focus and concentrate on the scene. I'm in the middle of the scene. I'm telling my, my wife that you know, our son is dead or whatever the fuck I'm doing. And, you know, it's intense. And I'm looking over her shoulder and there's some crew guy, you know, sure. on his phone playing one of those stupid freaking games with the little frogs or whatever the hell that is. <laughs> um, and, you know, I see that. So yeah. um, I can understand an actor standing up for themselves and saying, and what you do in that case, actors out there, if you're new, you go to the first AD and you say, hey, listen, would you mind... Uh, there's some people in my eye line. If you could clear that for me, I'd really appreciate it. You don't go, hey, what the hell are you doing back there, man? Get out of my... You know, you right, don't do that right. stuff. You go to the first AD and say, hey, listen, could you do me a favor? Yada, yada. 
Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, look, valid point throughout. And, and, and I'm glad you bring it up and I'm glad you're so honest about it because, yeah, I, I agree. Things happen, especially like you said, it's been a long day. You're in a heated scene that the emotion is coming through that, that it's bound to happen and it's bound to come through a little bit. Yeah, I think that so, was the uh, what happened to Christian Bale on Terminator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's so valid point. I, lo- I love, you know, that how honest you were right there. And, and uh, you know, and because so many people, I think, aren't and we've been really lucky with who we've talked to, to the honesty about what it is and isn't on a set and some things that can go on and not go on on a set so i love hearing stories like that and and yeah thank you for that thanks for being honest no, no, of about course that. of um, course and, and um uh what was i gonna say um you know that the, in the end the only thing anybody's gonna see is the what's on the film exactly right? you know exactly the, the scene so there's all this other stuff going around which is equally important you know, the hair and the makeup and the crew and all, that's all very important and they need to be able to do their job. But we also have to remember in the end, the only thing left of this experience is what ends up on film. Is so we work. have to, you know, we all have to respect that space. Absolutely. And allow, you know, um, allow, uh, you know, the actors to do their work and the director to do their work to, 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 to you know, hopefully you know, bring this thing to another level and to get it seen, you know, so right. we can all keep doing it. You yeah, know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, okay. It, it, let me ask you, <laughs> I'm just going to ask you mind if we get a little controversial a little bit or talk about, talk a little bit about the me too movement and what's kind of going down with all of this stuff in the industry. Cause uh, I want to talk billionaire boys club because I think, ah, yes. I, I think okay, that yeah. what you just said, it plays into that a little bit. I, mean, I saw the film. I thought it was outstanding. I was, I was really a fan. Looking, I was really looking forward to seeing yeah, it. Yeah, I was a fan <laughs> of, of the television film. Oh, the and, original one. Yeah, yeah. and, oh, okay. and I, was, I was really looking forward to this one, and I was able to see it. But unfortunately, a lot of people were not able to see it and might not be able to see it because of what happened with the situation with Kevin Spacey and stuff. And for me, I was like gutted by that because there's a lot of really solid performances in that film. And it's actually, in my opinion, a really great film and it's It's a a disservice to the people that were involved in the making of that film that unfortunately for them, because of somebody else, their work's not going to be able to be seen. So um, what what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I mean, you're, you're really, you're really, uh, um, yeah, you, you, you're, you're, it's really unfortunate that that, uh, that happened, uh, that, that, uh, you know, Spacey kind of drug the whole thing down. Now, look, everything that's coming out is pretty, I mean, it's not good, obviously. Right. The stuff that, you know, he is, uh, accused of doing, I mean, nothing's proven, but I have to say that, you know, I, I didn't hear anything about those sorts of things mm-hmm. specifically, but I, I, I heard grumblings over the years about, you know, uh, working with Spacey and, and, you know, there being issues. Right. Uh, but I don't know of anything specific, and that's just hearsay on my part. Right. But I, I do think it's unfortunate that everyone has to suffer for um, Spacey's, you know, reputation. Right. And... You know, it, it's really it, it's it's the studio and, or, and the distributors, whoever's involved in that. They they made the choice that it was it was radioactive, and they weren't going to put throw the money behind it. And uh, you know, so uh, I mean, if, from their point of view, I mean, if you're looking at it from that that perspective, they have to decide if they're going to dump millions of dollars into publicity for this thing. Agreed. You know, they could spend 10 or $20 million to launch it, you know, depending on what kind of opening they're thinking for it. Um, and, you know, they have to decide, okay, are we going to take that risk? And I guess somebody just said, no, nah, I don't, I don't want to take this risk. We'll, we'll just, we'll do it in a few theaters and we'll get it out on, uh, on DVD and uh you know streaming and and we'll just hope we can get our money back when we right. sell it to netflix or wherever else we're going to sell it to right uh we're not going to spend that that back end stuff now i didn't see it actually so i don't i don't know but i'm glad you you enjoyed it so i, I, think it's, I it's did pretty solid i did i will say i thought it was extremely solid i thought all the performances were were just stellar 
Um, it moved well. It was edited well. It was extremely bad. I loved the little shout out to the TV movie with Judd Nelson as the dad, um, uh, who had played the original character in the TV movie. Um, yeah, just a really well done film. And uh, I'm hoping people do find it in another avenue and are able to see it. And um, and I hope you do. I, I hope you take a look at it and kind of see because it was good and you should be proud to have been involved in it. I think all the people who worked on that film should be proud to have been involved in it. It was a good film. And uh, I hope that oh, people cool. see it. I hope that people see it. Well, I hope so too, because you know, it's it's a pity that everyone else has to suffer for you know someone else's actions. Exactly. Um, so hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully it'll it'll have legs. Um, you know, once it uh, becomes available, streaming and and video and whatnot, you know, or a DVD and whatnot. Yep. Agreed. Um, Agreed. But I wanted to put that out there. I know it's probably a little controversial, but I, I did. Like I said, I was a fan of the film, and I I did want to reference it uh, because I do think. It deserved to be seen. So, so what do you think about social media? Has it changed your the way you approach how to go after roles? Have you started to look more into what followers you are following and who you are not following? Yeah, I'm just really getting started. I'm a little late to the game getting my uh, social media presence. So, oh uh, my because, goodness! Uh, my, my Instagram oh, is so brand new. Would you guys follow me, man? And uh, uh, I know it's important it's, these days. It, I mean, yeah, I've been working it, for so long, but. And you know, you it's know, crazy still. because it's it's so important in front of and behind the camera. I can't tell you how many times on the on the production side of it we get asked how many followers do we have and you know this or that. Hence the radio show to try to build the name recognition. It, it's crazy how important it has become these days. Um so and yeah, absolutely you're uh we follow you and we're by at the end of the show we're gonna tell everybody where to follow you. Uh cool. <laughs> um, make sure that everybody follows you. So, what you got coming up? I mean, what where are some uh, things people can see coming up? We know we got American Horror Story tonight. Um, uh, where let's are some see. Other I did a Laura Dern film. Um, where I play her husband. That's um, that is Trial by Fire. Uh-huh. So that I'm not sure when that's coming out, but it's 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 on its way pretty soon. Okay. I did uh, uh, I did a few things in Louisiana. That's uh, Stand In, Semper Fi. Uh, Fonzo, that's another Tom Hardy thing, which should be interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, Watchmen, I think, is coming out next year. Yep. Um, and of course, Venom. We want to send everybody to go see Venom. Yeah, Venom, get out to the theaters, man. Keep that thing rolling. Absolutely. Um, uh, and yeah, that's things. I did this little uh, Gabriel Byrne thing, a zero zero zero. I think it's a Netflix thing, but I'm not sure. It's, it was it was a. Uh, a foreign production company, like some Italians produced it. So I'm not, I'm not sure what they had in mind for, uh, you know, for distribution on that deal, but it's a, it's a, a series, yep. uh, which should, uh, start in, in 2019 as well. Awesome. And of um, course, Cloak and Dagger, it's streaming. So everybody go watch Cloak and Dagger. If you yeah, watched check out it Cloak yet. and Dagger and support them in their new season, whatever they, I guess that'll probably be next year because they just started shooting. I yeah. Think. Yep. Highly recommend um, people go back and watch that. Like I said, you were brilliant in that and the show is great. So go, no, thanks. definitely check thanks. them out. I appreciate now. it. Yep. No problem, man. So, yeah, so listen, man, we, we know you're a busy guy, and you clearly are getting dinged there left and right with uh, uh, yeah. emails and stuff. So um, yeah. we're going to let you go. But thank you so much for uh, coming and talking to us today. And open invite, man. Anytime you got anything going on or, or you just want to come back and shoot the shit with us and oh, just um, Wayne, talk. Uh, I just want to say uh, thank you for choosing AT&T. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I'm sure I'll bump into you guys down in uh, – down to Louisiana next time. I mean, I still come in my, my, uh, you know, I have a lot of family in, in Baton Rouge. So I still, uh, come in a fair amount. And, uh, uh, yeah. So I appreciate you guys having me yeah. on and I'll definitely uh, keep you in the loop with, uh, with things. Yeah. Coming. Oh, walk away. Joe was another one. I just finished, which All is right. David, uh, straight Aaron and, oh, I'm blanking on his name. The guy from, um, the guy from, uh, the walking dead with the baseball bat, uh, uh Negan, Negan, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Yeah. yeah, I just shot with him last week. Really nice guy, too. I had a lot of fun with him. Oh, my gosh. I'm jealous, so, uh, man. That guy's awesome, right? Yeah, he was cool. He yeah, was a good dude. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, listen, man. Seriously, keep us in the loop. Let us know when you're back this way. We'd love to come hang out and maybe even do a show with you live, man. That'd yeah. be awesome. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Sounds like a plan. Cool, man. Well, take care of yourselves. All right. All right. You too, man. Like I said, okay. we'll holler at you. Great, man.
All right, bye. Stay bye. crazy. Yeah, that was such an awesome interview. Yeah, Freaking, man. he'd be awesome live. He would be yeah. awesome live. Yeah. He's a talker. Yeah, he yeah, is he, a talker. <laughs> he's a talker. <laughs> we just let him go. Just yeah, keep on exactly. Going. But he had great stuff to say. Exactly. I mean, I feel like when he's on a roll and he's got such good information. Just like, let him go. Yeah, just let him talk. Exactly. I mean, you know. Um, I love all of his insight on Soderberg. Though. Yeah, like all the different. I love stuff. how deep you went on on the camera qualities and yeah. shit. Like, you can definitely tell right. he's done some stuff behind yeah. the camera. You know, oh, yeah. he, you know, he was throwing out terminology like you know. Well, we'll have to include like a little glossary. With all right, him, like, like this episode, so that people go the okay, quality of pixels and that, depth of field, right. and like yeah, depth of field well, different kind of, between. When he, when he kind of went on the, on the rant about about like when I've said people, you know, he stays in character a lot. Or I was like, I, I hope he didn't think I was meaning. Him, so yeah, no. Christian Bale probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like especially people probably don't know how to approach him, and because he's, I mean, I don't think that was. Well, the he, case he apologized on for all that, and yeah. he, he's. But well, it, it, it was a bad moment right there, but it was just the stress of the scene and trying to focus. And the right, fo- the focus was broken. Right. Well, and yeah. I like, he went back over and apologized and talked to the guy. Yeah, and, good and good I like how you. Wayne uh, explained that. Yeah, you know, as an actor and being in that situation, yeah. it's like that stuff happens. Exactly. Man. I mean, it's real can't... life. The, we are also people. Yeah. yeah well, and when you're in character and you're in an emotional scene, and you you can't just turn it off. Yeah, exactly. You know, if something happens, it's gonna exactly. explode. Like you just said, we're human. We're exactly. people. Exactly. That shit's gonna happen. To so. quote friends, you see, guys, I'm an actor, and I gotta keep my emotions right there at the surface. <laughs> Yeah. J-Lo wants Matt LeBlanc on the, on, on the show. Yeah, yeah, speaking oh, yeah. of that, we looked up... Because all we want to do is ask him, can you please say it? Yeah, exactly. Can you please do it? Please How you do it? it? You're, not, you're not on a mic. Don't talk. <laughs> oh! Uh, but we spent a oh, lot of I time can... just looking it up. Wow, we and Wayne, Wayne was on Friends. He was David's best friend that wanted to move to Minsk with David. And Phoebe almost ruined all that, but he chose... Max, who is Wayne, and instead of Phoebe, and his name is Wow, Wayne. yeah, his wow. name is Wayne. What? He, I don't. Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, I'm just gonna say it. Not clearly, you're a Wayne go fan it. and a Friends fan. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I was gonna bring it up. That's why we were kind of freaking out. But oh yeah, yeah no. Well, that, just just a reason to have him back on. Yeah, right. that'd be an epic thing to talk about on the live show with him. Like Sign you know, it. just like talk uh, about your Friends days. What was that like? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just great interview. Thanks for coming on the show, man. We'll have him back on with Matt LeBlanc. Oh my gosh. And yeah, they'll just talk oh. about that episode just yeah. for you. Yeah. That'd be exactly. amazing. Exactly. That'd be epic. <laughs> All right. All right. Now it's time for the top five segment this week. It is top five female TV show characters. That is a mouthful. Mm. And it's hard to try to get that. This right. one was really hard. Yeah. It I is have difficult. a three way tie for number one, but we'll oh. we'll get back to that. Oh. Would yeah. it be I, no, don't say it? Uh, uh, no, right. I no. have actually literally literally just five. You should be proud of me. Wow. Right. Just five. No just five. And like no split. Oh. At least not right now. Probably after y'all say some, I'll be like, wait, just kidding. Like, Shit. <laughs> so yeah. I okay. got a couple of Go ahead, ladies. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, so yeah, not really in any particular order, but uh, I put this one first because I'm watching Friends right now, just like Riley is. Um, Phoebe Bu- Phoebe Buffay, yeah, because yeah. she is my spirit animal, and I freaking yeah. love Phoebe. She's yeah. the Smelly best. Cat. <laughs> Smelly cat. Smelly cat. Uh, Smelly cat. Are they feeding uh, you? Okay. Uh, <laughs> two of them are from Game of Thrones. Daenerys Targaryen, mm-hmm. of course. Yeah. Khaleesi, you can't have it without her. Um, and Arya, because she's just a little badass. Yeah, I mean, I haven't, I haven't always agreed with everything she's done, but I'm like, but damn, that girl is freaking but damn. crazy. But, but damn. Um, then I also have Elaine Bennis, because I love Seinfeld, uh, and yeah. she's hilarious. Yeah. And uh, Leslie Nope, because <laughs> she inspires me. Well, there you go. Boom. I mean, that's a solid list. It is a solid list. That's a solid list. I'm so glad you had two people from one show because I did that too. <laughs> we already guessed yours. You don't even have to I, say yours. Yeah. We already knew who Let's they were. Let's see if we got it <laughs> right. Yeah, let's see how right we were. Yeah. All right, ready well, go. Well, now I want to know who you guessed. Well, it's we'll tell list. you if we were right. Damn. Gilmore um, Girls. Yeah. <laughs> that's our guess. Both of them. Yeah. yeah. One okay. two. We're two for two we're so two far. Two. Yeah. <laughs> so say their names. Yeah. Lorelai and Rory. Yep. Yeah. Uh, or, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
And then I had Phoebe too. She was oh. on that list too. Okay. And then Rebecca Pearson from This Is Us. Well, I called yeah. that one too. Yeah. Yeah. Did yep. you? Good yeah. for you. Yep. Well, then I know you had the other one right because you said it the other day. And that was. The, it's, I have uh, Meredith Gray from Grey's Anatomy. Yep. Yeah. We had about four out of five. Well, yeah. good. So at least, yeah. I, at least wow. you didn't have one. Okay. So. That is so funny. But I got... Whatever. I guessed your list, too. Whatever. <laughs> I got Queen Elizabeth, Claire Foy, The Crown. Mm. Oh, yeah. That was on my... That was a uh, yeah, contender for the list. Yeah, she's epic, man. Uh, keep Team Claire. I'm Team Claire. Team Claire. Yeah. We're all Team Claire. Yeah, seriously. Uh, Rose from The Golden Girls, Betty White. I thought about wow. that yeah. one, but I honestly haven't watched enough Golden Girls. Oh, man. But I, I, I love do love it. Betty White. I used White. to watch it with my grandma. Aww. <laughs> uh Rebecca Pearson, This Is Us, Mandy Moore. Yep. Oh. Uh, Elaine from Seinfeld. Yeah. I love Elaine. Mm. And three way tie for number one Monica, Phoebe, and Rachel from Friends. There it is. Three way yeah. tie. I'm obsessed. You're such yeah. a Rachel. Yeah. It's, a, it's okay. Uh, huh? <laughs> I said, You're such a Rachel. I know. Yeah. <laughs> that was who I picked first, but then I was like, No, I got to give it to all of them. <laughs> and then, um, <laughs> For real, though, when we were watching Friends, isn't Kevin she and I, cold a lot? She they is cold all a lot. are. Yeah. Yeah. We, we were yeah. saying, like, We should have a drinking game where every time you see some nipples, you take a drink. Let's Seriously. be honest Matt. about it. Like, like, you'd be that's how you watch. You want alcohol poison, you watch Charm, and then take a drink for every. Seriously, though, like, I feel like Friends was the free the nipple campaign before the free the nipple campaign. Yeah. They were like everywhere. And they were wearing bras. I don't yeah, know. But they I must mean, have been like just... tissue paper for the bra part. Because... Oh my God. Yeah. Those lights run hot. We got to keep it I'm cold. so glad <laughs> we're talking about this. Yeah. It's they so like funny. like industrial nipples. I mean, because <laughs> like you said, they were like. Maybe the bras just had nipples built into them so that know. no matter what, you always <laughs> saw nipples. I feel like they should have done a whole episode though because you know, even back in the day, people made comments about that. All yeah. Oh, they yeah. should have done an episode where all of the guys had their nipples. Yeah, that would have been funny. That would have been so so hilarious, you know, just hilarious. as a running gag. All right, so now I'm going to show my age. Show it. Because, you know, I can't have yeah. it. Do it. So, yeah, uh, from yeah, um, a show from your day. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Mary Richards. <laughs> Mary Richards. Obviously, Mary Tyler Moore. Um, and then I'm going to do a little bit, you know, maybe you guys kind of know or not, but um, uh, Samantha Maselli, Alyssa Milano from Who's the Boss. Mm, mm-hmm. uh, Jason would have killed me if I left her off. <laughs> I was total crushing on her for all of the 80s and 90s. Uh, yeah, I was. She'll come on the show, won't she? Come on. <laughs> um, speaking of charmed, Chris. Uh, uh, mm. Yeah, and then CJ Craig, Allison Janney from The West Wing. Mm-hmm. Uh, phenomenal. Uh, CJ was kicked ass. And then I'm going really old school. I'm going to go uh, Diana Prince slash Wonder Woman. Linda oh. Carter oh, man. Nice. and uh, Jamie Summers slash the Bionic Woman. Uh, so taking it back, yeah, old school. Yeah, I mean, but you said of all time, and That's I'm old. True. So and I mean, everybody was in love with Jamie Summers and Linda Carter and yep. Wonder Woman. I mean, it's true. It's true. She had a tiny waist. That Who's woman, that? Linda Carter. Yeah, yeah. she, she yeah. Had still like does. Eighteen inch waist. It was freaking crazy. Not yeah. really, but yeah, but she was tiny. No, yeah, she she yeah. She was a great Wonder twist. Woman. Little bitty. Yeah, she's a great Wonder Woman, and she's yeah. a great president now on Supergirl. Just saying, she's, yeah. yeah, she's yeah. still getting it done. Hell yeah, she comes here a lot. Really? Yeah, she performs at the the Gulfport Casino there. What's it called? Whatever. Island View. Yeah, yeah, Island View. She sings yeah. there all really? the time. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Huh. Damn. Yeah. Interesting. What yep. a woman. <laughs> and the power of statue. Okay. Uh, sound <laughs> man. Sound <laughs> man. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> all right. Well, here's one from. From well, your from day. Gaffer's it was also mine from, too. from Gaffer's Day. Okay, yeah. Let, that, in fact, well, can we have a Gaffer's Day? That would yeah. be awesome. Okay, be awesome. back to Margaret Houahan from Mash. Mm, yes, nice. Hot Lips. Mash. Hot there lips. you go. Um, I had a three-way tie for two because of they're all for animes. Because mm-hmm. terribly nerd I am. Uh, Major <laughs> Motoko Kugasa, 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 hmm. Kugasaki. I can't say it. I from Ghost in the Shell, Faye, Faye Valentine from Cowboy Bebop, and then uh, Hada Hada Haraku from Fully Cooly. Hey, at least you got Hada Hada who? Hada Hada Haraku. Okay. Hada Hada who? Just making sure. Hada, I even know the voice actors on that show for the English version couldn't say that name. Yeah, wow. <laughs> they're like eh, no. Um, Doctor Lisa Cuddy from House. Mm, also nice. thirteen uh, was awesome too. So yep. I want to mention yep. that. Um, Dana, Sco- uh, Dana Scully. Oh, X-Files. I thought about putting that one yeah. on there. And then um, Carly, Ch- uh, I can't say her last name, and uh, Angela Moss from Mr. Robot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's good. Because yeah, it good. actually shows kind of like um, one of them, she's trying to take over for um, the trying to take the group and lead them in season two and trying to be strong while putting this big facade and then seeing her on the background. And Angela Moss 
she's just trying to be successful, and then she turns into a complete um, total. Don't tell yeah. me because I haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, you haven't no seen spoilers. season two yet? No. Oh, not yet. I I, I, I know three. what you're talking about because I could see where it was going. Humanitarian. But I don't know. She's like great uh, with charities uh-huh. and yeah. yeah, just like a lovely person. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. No, it's just she just becomes incredibly strong and knowing exactly what she wants. There you go. That's and a good way. Yeah. Good way. Mm-hmm. Stuff I know. I gotta watch. I like keep bugging Kevin. I'm like, we need this. Oh, I want to see season three so bad, and I think season four is the end of the show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. They're ending yeah. F- the four. Craziness. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Good. Good category. It was. That's it a lot was. of epic characters. It really is. It is. Yeah. Now, right now, it's time for the word of the day. What do you got? Sound. Shimp. Man. Shimp. Yes. Shimp. Shimp. Gold shemp. Um, shemp is a term for someone who appears in a film under heavy makeup or filmed from the back or even perhaps, well, or sorry, perhaps showing an arm or foot. Mm. Yes. And was that from like the Three Stooges shemp? That is yeah. correct. Because okay. there's a lot the of different shemps from. in the Three Stooges and there's oh, a lot of people okay. played it. And a lot of times like um, when they're doing over the shoulder shots, well, that actor might not be there. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. we've already talked to several actors um, that, oh, I never got to interact with them, but they were in the same scene. Well, right. Because there's a film in person for the Shemp, the yep. Shemp or so. And it was heavily prevalent in the Three Stooges after Curly left with Shemp, so that's where the term comes from, okay. Shemp. Yeah. Funny so. story, my dad played a stand-in for Wolfgang Pup in a movie in New Orleans. Oh, nice. snap. So wow. he was greeting people at the door as Wolfgang. Nice. That's awesome. That yeah. is pretty awesome. <laughs> Go, Dad. So. Go, Dad. <laughs> yeah. And especially if you watch anything with... Uh, um, Anything with Bruce Campbell or Sam Raimi. Mm-hmm. Oh, Sam yeah. Raimi loves to put Bruce Campbell as a shemp or yeah. every one of his family members as shemp yeah, in true. the uh, credits. Oh. oh, yeah. True. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Now it's time for the box office predictions. Since uh, Jason's yeah, not here. Since Jason's not here with have, the sound yeah, effects. Yeah, oh. so that's it's j Lo's box office predictions. <laughs> yeah. so, okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, new this week, new movies coming out. Halloween and mm. The Hate You Give Nationally. I'm pretty excited about both of these, so I want to go see both of them this weekend. Yeah. Kevin wants to go see Halloween. Yeah. He keeps making me watch scary stuff. Yeah. There you go. You're like, eh. I feel like I know. Halloween and The Hate You Give will probably end up in an Is It Worth It? Mm, I think I so. I that. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. And while not in the box office, before I before you go on with the rest of it, uh, I do want to interject that also coming out uh, Friday this weekend, Daredevil Season 3 Season on three. Netflix. I got to catch up. It, it might as well be a movie. It's yeah. epic. So. Seriously. And uh, How to Make a Murderer. Oh, and man. How to Make, make a Murderer. Murder. Oh, damn. And now back to box. <laughs> back to box. <laughs> Movies that are already out. A Simple Favor, Night School, Smallfoot, A Star is Born, Venom, Bad Times at the El Royale, and First Man, and Goosebumps, Haunted House. Mm. Th- this one's pretty interesting this week. I think, obviously, Halloween will be number one. We're in October. It's getting closer to Halloween. Mm. Uh, number two, I think Venom will keep keep that top spot up there uh with around 20 to 25 million number three i think a star is born with around 15 to 20 million number four first man with ryan gosling and claire floyd about uh 10 to 15 million and then number five bad times at the el royale with around five to seven million. so you're not even giving the hate you give into the top it's five three Oh, I th- I didn't hear you say that for no. three. Okay. No, I oh I did miss it. I went over it. Yeah, I Damn. was shocked. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, well, let's do that one at number four, and then first man at number five. Forget uh, bad times at El Royale. Yeah, I think they've Forget officially that. renamed <laughs> bad times at El Royale as bad times at the box office. At the box office. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's apparently not yeah. doing well at all. I think it might have been like the RT film that no one was interested in. What was that one we saw? Uh, couple months ago uh hotel artemis yeah kind of like that yeah. very artsy and was awesome but yeah. like probably nobody saw it exactly. so yeah. i feel yeah you're right i think it's kind of think that it's film. gonna be one of those um um reward season movies when the oscars come out and they get a nomination people start going back and trying to get it for dvd type of movie i think it's gonna do really well on streaming and and blu-ray and stuff like that i don't know so much about oscar but it's very artsy it's very um you know, bijou, college yeah. bijou type film, I, I think. Um, you know, so. Yeah. We'll see. See yeah, they, happens. They've pretty much proven that for the most part, if it's not high concept, it doesn't really do well in theaters. Exactly. Yeah. And yet, I mean, it, it, I mean, I loved Hotel Artemis. Yeah. I mean, Jodie Foster yeah, it was and Sterling good. K. It was really good. Yeah. So. Batista. Yeah. Batista. That's <laughs> yeah. right. Um, um, but we're also going to talk about First Man because we were expecting that one to be pretty good. Or It looks phenomenal. Honestly, Oscar 
contender, I've heard. I do want to see that too. Yeah, but I think it took the hit at the box office because all of its audience was going to go see A Star is Born. Well, and also I think they didn't do enough marketing for it. I didn't even know that it was a thing. Like oh, a really? lot of these I haven't seen any kind of marketing for. Yeah. And especially for people who, who don't watch like, you know, cable TV anymore. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Where you have to market otherwise. I think the marketing was a victim um, of the controversy, though. From what I understand, the, a lot of the marketing was canned because the film chose not to show the moment where they plant the American flag. Mm. It's not even in the film. Why? Uh, because their reasoning behind it was is that it was such a global, global accomplishment. Yeah, and, and not that it's an meant American to show the global, you know, idea of what man can do and what mankind can do. It was one giant leap for mankind. Oh. And that didn't go so well with a lot of people saying, well, okay, yeah, mankind and global, but it was America who did right. it, and we should see the flag. And so that caused some controversy, and I think after that, a lot of the marketing kind of hit the ground yeah. um, because they weren't sure how to yeah. market it because a lot of people were upset about that. So, And another knockback I've also heard is that Claire Foy's character is not very good. Oh, really? They said she's just really kind of like a whiny you know, not enough really meat for a female yeah. character. It's more of just a, a secondary whiny wife yeah. kind of a thing. Mm. And so that's disappointing because yeah. she's phenomenal. Yeah, exactly. And if that is what she was regulated yeah. to, I, mm. Mm. So, but I don't have know. to going to have to check, check it out. out. And see. Yeah, mm. definitely. Goodness. Hate gracious. you give though. I'm excited about that. Yeah. One. I'm what really is that about? about? I haven't seen anything one. about that one either. Oh man. It's about basically um, police crime on the black community. And I will oh, we'll watch the trailer. With the, it's a young young girl that's mm-hmm. oh, okay. I did see yeah, that. I forgot that, that was the world. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I did see I did see trailers for that. Just kidding. Uh, okay. It looks so I forgot good. that that was the name of it, but I remember yeah. seeing that. I one. really like her too. I yeah. think and I'm still gonna campaign for her as uh Riri in the MCU. Mm-hmm. I think she would be a great iron heart. I'm just saying she's yeah. she's the right age, she's a brilliant actress. Make that happen if you're gonna replace Robert Downey Jr. Anyway though, <laughs> yeah, she's just been great from Hunger Games on. Yeah. I mean, she's been fantastic. Seriously. So I hope it does well for her. Yes, definitely, definitely. Now flipping it over to the Billboard chart toppers. Is it Kiki? Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> no, but that <laughs> Snoop Dogg video about Kiki oh, was my hilarious. Gosh. Oh my god. Snoop Dogg. That was funny. Was talking about, <laughs> what yeah. happened? He was talking about, ooh, I know who or I know who fucked your bitch or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and he was like, talking, oh, Kiki, I know who Kiki is. Yeah, you know? like talking to Drake, and he was uh, referring to Kim Kardashian, going back to I've that. I've heard yeah. that before, yeah. Yeah, he was talking to Kanye about Drake putting his stuff yeah. in her. Like, yeah. It was just, you have to go watch it. Yeah, it's viral Snoop at this Dogg's point. Hilarious. Just Snoop Dogg is like, he lets Kanye have yeah, it. Yeah, he really yeah. does. He's yeah. like, that's why you're so mad. <laughs> that's why you're everywhere being crazy. Like, oh, man. Like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. But anyway, Hot 100's number one this week and for the fourth straight week, Maroon 5's Girl Like You with Girls Like You with Cardi B. Mm. And I really don't like this song. I feel like this, her, her part is really weird. That's just my opinion. I'm just going to put that out there. I don't know if anyone else has heard it. Have you guys not. heard it? I heard it on the radio today. I, I really like, haven't uh, heard it, but that's disappointing because yeah. I, you know, Adam Levine and yeah, Maroon I like Five Maroon Five aren't no- typically ones who like do something for the sellout, exactly. like just to put Cardi B yeah, in. Because I, I feel like I was just like, why is she on this song? Oh, well, yeah. that's disappointing. Yeah, because I really like them. It is disappointing. And on the top, the Billboard Top 200 Albums, A Star Is Born soundtrack because mm. it's mm. just so freaking good. I was listening to it like all last week. Yeah. Is there anybody, by the way, who has seen that film who doesn't like it? I'd like to know because I'd like to know what's wrong with you. Yeah. (laughs) Like, like, it is really a phenomenal film. I mean, it's just. It gets you all choked up. It does. I mean, if you don't tear up at the end, something is seriously wrong with you. Like, honestly, it's just really powerful Mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. You can catch our review on that on Is It Worth It? CrazyAntFilms.com or our YouTube channel, Crazy Ant Films. Um, an honorable mention this week on the Billboard chart toppers, 21 Pilots. They landed at number two with their hey. new album that came out. So, yeah, bravo to them. <laughs> this is what finally gets Little Cam to have a response. Uh, yeah. A vocal 21 response. Pilots. 21 Yay. Pilots. Yay! They're really great. They sound like that. Uh-huh. Gosh! Yeah! They're going to be number one next week. I know it. Oh a God. Minnie Mouse now? Uh, so anyway, make sure to go follow us on all of our social media handles, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Reddit, Crazy Ant Films, 
on Twitter, crazy underscore ant underscore films on Instagram, the crazy ant film company on Facebook. You can like this podcast and listen to this podcast on Spotify, Google Play Music, and Apple Podcasts. We have a website, crazyantfilms.com. And just, we're everywhere, guys. We're everywhere. We have merchandise on our website. Go check that out. Go buy some stuff. Get a little crazy. And thank you to our fabulous guests this week. Y'all were amazing. And one more thing. We love Oprah! 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 <laughs> <laughs>